What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to the stream today. I've got something that I'm always so passionate about showing off. Uh, this is my... Everybody has that one game that they just... They play nonstop, or I wouldn't say nonstop, but they, they play when, I don't know, they're feeling down or, or something that always gets them excited about gaming again, you know, maybe when you play some games for a long period of time, like specific RPGs or open world games, everything can get kind of stale for a little bit. This is one of those games for me that just kind of, I don't know, relaxes me, puts me in a, a mental state that I just fall in love with the universe and the stars and space. Space has always been something that I've enjoyed ever since I was a little kid. Uh, you know, a little mini strain walking around saying, you know, one day I want to be an astronaut. Unfortunately, my life never got to that point. Uh, only seeing out of one eye is not something that you can go into the, you know, astronaut biz with. You have to have perfect vision uh, to be an astronaut. Rightfully so, because you need to be able to see things perfectly clear. And me only having one eye that I see out of just means that I can't... Uh, I can't live that life of an astronaut, but games today, a lot more so than, you know, 25, 30 years ago, have just excelled in graphics and in design and in just being able to experience things that you never, ever were be able to experience before. So this is one of those, you know, I live vicariously through this game, you know, I'm playing it almost every night. I don't do a lot of streams on it. I don't do a lot of videos on it, right? Because this is one of those games where I, as a gamer, just get to enjoy. You know, as, as a content creator, you got to have something where you don't feel like you have to hit record every second. Because if you do that, then not only is gaming a job, but it, it, it becomes less and less fun because it's more about, you know, how can how good can I make this video look or, or you know, uh, how good is my gameplay going to be? With, with Star Citizen, I don't care. I just get to play something that I absolutely 100% love and enjoy, and I, I don't care if I record it or not. But there's a free fly event right now, and I want to show it off. So let me explain what's going on as of right now. So starting from yesterday, which was November 19th, all the way through to the beginning of December, you are able to play this game absolutely 100% for free, and you can test out over 100 ships for free. You don't have to pay a single cent. You can try the game out. And if you decide at the end of that free fly event that you want to purchase the game, then you can do so and you can get into the game. I mean, I think the lowest amount that you can pay for is like $40. The size and scope of this game is beyond anything imaginable. So I think it's a small price to pay for getting into uh, something, especially if you're a space fan like myself. Um, I wouldn't pass it up. So you'll see in the top right corner is my referral code. It's also in the description as well as a link for um, where you can go to uh, download this game. Just make sure you use my referral code. You will get a free ship out of it if you do purchase the game. So if you do actually purchase the game, you will get a free ship besides the ship that you get with your purchase. So you'll technically have two ships to start your adventures with. Um, so use that referral code, you know, it, it, it helps the channel as well. So make sure you look in the description for that. We're going to go ahead and get started here. This is the, you know, free fly event. It's the aerospace expo 2951. Uh, the year in the game is 2951. So it coincides with 2021, 2951, and the next year will be 2022, 2952. But every year, uh, they do an anniversary event in November um, and it's pretty much a chance for you to check out all of the ships really get a bird's eye view of everything going on and we're going to take a look at uh, that today today specifically is RSI day I believe Robert Space Industries is a um, is a manufacturer of ships in the game kind of timeline in the whole lore of the game uh, Chris Roberts was the man who created Star Citizen obviously and he created like a, a, a in-game lore uh, like of himself creating, you know, these ships and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get in. Um, I'll show you guys the options here. For those of you that have seen this before, you know exactly what you're going to get into this. But for some of you out there that might be new to the game, 
um, I want to make sure I, I show it off in all of its right form. So we're gonna I'm playing this in 4K. I've got borderless mode on. Quality is set to very high. All these are on medium because they really don't matter too much right now. So you can set these to medium to get a little bit better. A um, uh, little bit. The game will run a little bit better. So motion blur off. V-Sync is going to be on. And you can see everything film grain off. I have a RTX 3090. Now, this game is not optimized fully. So it's not going to run as good as a complete game. This is still an alpha. Obviously, it's been an alpha for years. Everyone knows this. You know, it's not something that that Star Citizen has shied away from. It's been an alpha for a very, very long time. This is a massive scale that they're creating. But there has been some major improvements, and the biggest improvements have been since this following patch that just came out. There's a whole permadeath system now where if you die, you have to be cloned, and you are a clone of your former self when you wake up. There's medical gameplay now. It's serious. There's persistence. You have inventory. You have looting. There's so much more now in this game than there has ever been before and i'm excited to show it off to you guys so we're gonna go ahead and jump in to the persistent uh universe and take a look so uh we have our current location which is new babbage that is where the aerospace expo is granted the game might crash there might be problems that you see during this gameplay it's gonna happen it happens it's just a part of alphas everyone knows this but I still have to reiterate it so you guys are fully aware. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Um, I'll, I'll shout out a few people. Welcome, Sunshine, Daniel, Cartier. Uh, welcome, Galaxy Cat. Um, who can now? I'm sorry if I pronounced that badly. I probably did. Uh, welcome, Salvatore. Welcome... Uh, to everybody that's out there watching. So say hello if you want to. Um, I'm just excited to show this off to you guys. We're going to be checking out a few different ships. going to be taking our time looking through the expo hall so you guys can see everything going on. Welcome, Yeehaw. Yeehaw. I just love showing the game off. So every single day, there is a different manufacturer that showcases their ships. You can rent those ships for free. And towards the end of the event you'll be able to rent pretty much every ship um, that's here, uh, kind of like a best in show where they're going to show off all the ships. Again, take this time, download the game, use my referral code, play it for free so you can test it out to make sure it runs on your computer. This is not a console game. This is strictly for the PC Master Race. So um, I don't think you need the beefiest of beefiest of beefiest computers, but you do want to make sure that you have a rig that's going to be able to run games, obviously. Uh, this is no slouch in the graphical department. This is a universe built off of just amazingness. Welcome, Army of One. By the way, I, th I think it was Army of Anyone. Um, one of my favorite bands, man. Uh, they have some amazing songs. Check them out. Army of Anyone. Uh, they were made from the, some of the members of Stone Temple Pilots. takes a while to get into the game just so you guys are aware but once you're in as long as there's you know no crashes or anything like that you're not going to really get any loading whatsoever the entire universe so what's in the game currently for those that do not know is a complete solar system called the stanton system so if you equate the soul system well there's another system called the stanton system soul system is actually in the lore Eventually, it's going to be made, but right now, they have a complete system called the Stanton system in the game as of right now. Um, and there are, uh, I think, uh, four planets. Each planet has, like, two or three moons. Um, and all of that is completely explorable, landing from space, um, going down to the planet side. All of that is in complete real-time... Uh, each planet has landing zones that you can land at uh, to do certain missions that you want to do. You want to be a bounty hunter, you can be a bounty hunter. You want to deliver cargo, you can deliver cargo. You want to do, you want to be a mercenary, you can be a mercenary. Uh, you want to be a pirate, you know, and do evil things, you can do that. There's missions for that. Missions for pretty much everything. So we're going to go ahead and jump right on in. We land it at our kind of apartment, I guess you uh, can call it. 
So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, you'll notice some lag delays and frames. Right now I'm getting very, very bad frames right now. Let's see how many I'm getting. Normally this is indicative of what you're going to get, but right now it looks like the frames, at least in this room, are pretty bad. I'm not sure why, though. But here's our character. We just have a regular outfit on. What I'm going to do, though, since we're not leaving the area just yet as far as, like, leaving the space. Like I said, the frames right now, for whatever reason, seem to be pretty bad, but that doesn't necessarily... That's a server thing. It's not your systems or whatever, because normally I get about 70 to 80 frames a second, but uh, there's probably a lot of people on the servers, um, and they're just, like, really bogged down today. Obviously, if you want to uh, go to a different server, you can do that, and you might get better... Um, you might have a better chance at everything. So, all right, what we're going to do is let's take this guy off. This is the new type of gameplay, which is the inventory system. So what we need to do is find... Actually, we probably could have kept that undersuit on. No, 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 we don't want that. Let's... Uh, we're going to do some civilian clothes here. Something nice to wear to this expo event. Uh, you could do that by just going to your filters and then going, let's see, uh, clothing. That way only clothing shows up. Um, yeah, here we go. So let's see what we got here. Let's put these pants on. Uh, shirt wise, what do we want to go in with? And then let's load up a jacket. What's this one look like? That looks pretty cool. Let's give ourselves some shoes. Uh, let's see, we can do a hat. What else we got? Gloves. We're looking nice and stylish. The hat on. I have other things too, but they might not be showing up. Let's see if they're in here. I have glasses and other stuff as well, but I think this should be good enough for now. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here and see if the frames get a little bit better than this room. Like I said, as of right now, the frames seem to be like they're not too good. I might switch servers just to get some better frames. You guys are probably not seeing something that's that bad. So if you're okay with it, I don't mind. Um, we look pretty good. <laughs> that guy's got his... He's a clone, which means that he died at some point and he just hasn't changed his uh, clothes at all. How strong does your PC need to be? Um, I mean, I would be lying to you if I said it doesn't need to be strong. It most certainly needs to be strong. But you never know if you can run the game until you run the game. So give it a shot. It's the only way you're going to know. He just changed his outfit, so he's he's all naked now. Yeah, but as you can see, the... I don't know. This server doesn't seem like it's very, very good. What we're going to do is just go ahead and... I'm going to exit, and we're going to try a different server. Just because I want the game to run a little bit better when I'm showing it off. This is not indicative of what you're going to normally get. Normally, it's going to be a lot smoother, um... But it just could have been a bat a server that's like on its last leg or something like that. Alright, let's jump back in. This should hopefully take me to a different server. And hopefully that server will be a little bit smoother. Textures are amazing in the game. I mean, everything is so lifelike. It's just one of those games that just really feels very, very like good, you know?
Now, see, it really doesn't matter what graphics cards you have. You could literally have a very low graphics card and be able to play this game well. The thing that bogs the game down any because it's not optimized is your RAM and what you're running your hard drive on. So the best thing to do is to make sure that you install this game on a solid state or faster drive. If you then install this on a RPM type of drive, like one of the old hard drives, um, it's, it's not going to run as good as you want. If you do with a solid state or an M.2, anything flash, um, it's going to run significantly better. And you also have to remember that I'm playing in 4K with a 3090. So, but that really actually doesn't matter. If I were to turn the game to 1080 uh, with a 3090, I would still get the same exact frames. And so my frames would not improve at all because the game, the game doesn't really run off of your graphics card for the most part. It runs off of your gigabyte memory and your CPU. So obviously the better CPU and the better memory you have and, and it's installed on a, on a uh, <coughs> excuse me on a uh, solid state drive or faster it's going to run better period all right oh that's much better this is much better perfect all right this is a way better uh, server oh yeah I'm smooth as hell now uh, you can't see what I'm getting but we're we're definitely a lot smoother than we just previously were as you can clearly see there's another guy. <laughs> Everyone keeps dying, I guess. Son, you cannot play it on PS4. It is only for PC. Oh yeah, much, much better. Yeah, this game would like literally crash your uh, PlayStation 4. It would literally crash your PlayStation 5. The game is, it's too, it's too highly developed and too like, um, it's too much. It just would not be able to. All right, so we're heading to the expo. Would not be able to handle it. Hurry up, hurry up before it closes. Ah, we got it in. All right, sweet. Careful, doors are now closing. All right, so we're headed to the expo. Then this is just one planet. This is the planet that is furthest from the sun. So it is the coldest planet in the uh, in this specific star system or in this. Uh... Man, look at that. Beautiful, right? I just love when I get to show off this game. It is. It is an MMORPG. Yep. It's uh, in the vein of like, you know, uh, the Old Republic or something like that. Uh, but a space opera. So it's pretty much like Star Wars. Almost exactly like Star Wars. You get to be everything you would get to be in Star Wars except for a Jedi. <laughs> All right. So here we go. We are here. IAE, this is the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. 2951 at Microtech, which is the planet that we're currently on. And this area we're located in is the Tobin Expo Center. So with that being said, let's take a look. Dare to fly. All right. So what's one really, really cool thing about all of this is there's a lot of uh, lore and stuff that you can get into. So first things first is we'll take off the chat so you guys can see. And we'll take this. All right. This is like a little introduction. Hello and welcome to the 2951 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. This special audio presentation will be your guide to the ins and outs of the various halls and provide unique insight about the vehicles and manufacturers on display. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoy your time with us here at this year's IAE. 
Now, if you guys need me to turn up the sound a little bit, uh, I can do that. Thank you for visiting New Expo The theme of this year's expo is Dare to Fly, which celebrates the courage of pilots everywhere who boldly take flight to discover new thrills, to seek adventure, and to push boundaries farther than ever imagined. With the right ship and the right frame of mind, anything is possible. Yeah, Jen is doing much better. So she had a reaction to something that the doctor gave her yesterday, and it closed her throat up so that she couldn't breathe. So we had to call the emergency 911. They had to bring an ambulance out and uh, take her to the hospital. So she's doing much, much better. We got her home last night, and she's been pretty much in bed sleeping, and uh, she says she's breathing good and everything is is significantly better so thank you all for the love and the fair wishes and everything like that introducing uh the airy starfighter and redeemer those are the two newest ships that are inside the game now so pretty cool this is just the the hall this is just the outside area and you'll see that there are shops here that you can shop at. All of this can be purchased with in-game money. Nothing you have to, like, literally, you know, buy with real money or anything like that. I could walk up to this shirt. I could try it on. I could buy it right now. And then equip it. I mean, that's just how simple it is. The game at this point now, since they've added the inventory system, which is something that is completely brand new to this newest patch, means that everything you have actually has meaning to it now all your suits and everything if you were to die with this outfit on you would lose this outfit forever so and then you have to go back and buy buy another outfit uh you know it's real persistence it's everything is real if we die we get sent to a cloning medical facility and now you know we lose whatever our character had on him however if you know exactly where you died you could go back to that point and you could loot your old body and get your clothes and get your weapons and get anything that you had lost during that specific death. So there's, there's permadeath in the game now. So your character will die, but you will be cloned. It's very interesting. Uh, it's all brand new now. Uh, they just implemented it uh, in this patch. So let's go ahead and take a trip down to the, uh, the Xbox or the, the expo hall. So this tells you the dates here. Two different halls, Apex and Zenith. So November 19th to 20th, um, Anvil Aerospace is in the Zenith hall and in the expo hall, um, November 20th, 21st is RSI. So we have two different locations to look at. First one we're gonna look at is Anvil Aerospace, which is going to be in the Zenith hall, okay? Lost Odyssey, this is an MMORPG. It's meant to be that way. This is meant to be not lifelike, but definitely similar to lifelike. Flying since 2920. A new journey. I love the way they do their holograms and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you could say it's like Dark Souls, but uh, on a much bigger and way grander scale. All right, let's see what we got here. Sail the stars. While it may be commonplace to sail through the stars, we should never lose sight of the wonders of spaceflight. From discovering new jump points, unearthing lost ruins, or setting new speed records. Famed artist Arudo Divani created this unique portrait series as a tribute to the diverse array of people who eagerly climb aboard their ships and dare to fly. All right, there's one thing I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna turn the volume up just a little bit. No reason to having it down that low. I love the look of this place. 
<coughs> All right, let's go in. So there's different views. Obviously, you've got first and you've got third person. The game itself runs in first person, but you can run the game in third, but you'll only get your uh, HUD options in first. This is the Anvil Expo. This was the day one expo. Anvil Aerospace may have made a name for itself along the front lines with its masterfully built fleet of military craft. But more and more of the company's civilian craft have captured the imagination of the Empire. Look no further than the Anvil Carrick to see a ship that has transitioned easily from its naval origins to the very edges of space as pilots use the ship to chart new territory. All right, so when you're doing a package, uh, when it comes to getting the game, so don't think of it as you are buying a ship. Think of it as you're supporting the game and they give you a ship, but there's different tiers of supporting the game. So which, which starter ship would I recommend? Well, there are two so-called main starter ships. That is the Aurora series and the Mustang series. If you want combat, if you want to pay the least amount of money and get straight into bounty hunting and combat, mercenary, pirating, that kind of thing, then you need to go with the Mustang version, okay? If you want to be able to do delivery missions, things like that, you want to uh, explore, well, you can explore in the Mustang as well, but you get a bed, so that means you can log off and when you log back in, you'll still be in your ship in space to pick up right where you left off. Then I recommend the Aurora series because they have a bed in their ship that allows you to log off the game, which is a huge thing when you don't want to have to be sent back to, say, the previous station you were at or your home base, right? There are other tiers of starter ships that go up a little higher. If, if you didn't mind how much you paid, let's say you wanted to pay, let's say $60 was the most you wanted to play to play the game, right? Then I highly recommend the Avenger. The Avenger is probably one of the best starter ships you can get because the Avenger is a perfect combat ship. It is a huge ship with lots of cargo space, uh, great weapons, a bed, an area, uh, a sleeping area. I mean, it's it's, Definitely, 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 probably, in my opinion, the best starter ship that you could get. Avenger, I would definitely recommend, if you don't mind going about $60. If you only want to spend about 40 or so, then go with the Mustang or the Aurora. How's the performance? I mean, it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. I've got a beast computer, so I can run it very decent. And while I'm in space, normally I get about 90 frames in 4K with a 3090. But it's always going to be different when you're in cities. You're going to get down to about the 40s or so. Uh, so it's always different. All right, let's take a look at some of the ships and whatnot. Uh, we'll just start with the big one that just kind of grabs your attention. This is what people would consider probably the best ship in the game as of right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. As the war against the Vanduul continues, Many pilots find themselves seeking a way to protect their home and loved ones during these uncertain times. Anvil Aerospace has been a strong ally in this endeavor, creating civilian versions of their popular military craft, like the Hornet F-7C, to protect you and the ones you care about. All right, so let's take a look at this ship. We'll go to this one first. This is the Anvil Carrick. This is a massive ship, first of all. You you will be able to get this ship in-game by doing missions and missions. And obviously, you're going to have to grind to get a ship like this. This is a massive ship, uh, but lots of cargo space. This is a great ship if you want to play with your friends. If you're in this ship, you could set your med bay to this ship, and you could... Sp Let's say you die in combat outside of the ship, or uh, you could spawn back into this ship instead of a hospital this ship has its own hospital so right now because of the aerospace event that's going on the frames are a little bit lower than there usually are during the normal times uh, so just keep that in mind 
Um, this is the Anvil Carrick. And I'll read what this says here. Adventure calls and aerospace answers with the Carrick. Built to endure extreme conditions in both space and atmosphere, this self-sustaining explorer has more than earned its long-standing status as the go-to pathfinder for both military and civilian service. Let's go ahead and take a look and head inside. I do not consider this to be a pay-to-win. Because a pay-to-win uh, says that... Um, how do I put this? There are two aspects of this game. There is multiplayer, which is the MMORPG, and there is the single player. The single player is not out yet. Um, that's going to be an experience that'll come out hopefully within the next few years, but who really knows? Uh, it's not out yet, the single player experience. This is the multiplayer experience. <laughs> Everyone says pay to win because you're paying for ships, but you're not paying for ships. You're paying to support the game and you get a ship for it but all ships have different aspects of what they do some people don't want to do combat some people just want to do cargo like say this is a perfect ship for those kind of people that just want to do cargo right so the 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 back of the ship this area here is for vehicles uh vehicles like ground transportation style vehicles that you can put in here uh it's even got a little thing uh that you can press here to raise the ramp so that you don't accidentally drive it into the door uh pretty cool uh, we'll head inside and take a look. This is the cargo area. So this will take you to the uh, the main decks. Um, there's the docking collar. So if you need to dock it to a space station for whatever reason. There are pods that are going to be interchangeable at some point. They're just not yet. This is all area for cargo. You can see how big this area is. And it goes back, I think, about three or four of these. Uh, so you can see just how much cargo you'd be able to uh, transport. It's a huge, massive ship. And yes, you can go down there. You can take the elevators right there. You could... At first, you would totally get lost in this ship. And there's the main elevator. You've got your escape pods. If the ship is about to blow up, you obviously want to get to the escape pods. Um, actually, those are not the escape pods, I think. Those are just uh, where you keep your uh, spacesuits. But they do have escape pods on here. Uh, you've got turrets. This thing comes with turrets. These are all manned turrets, so almost just like uh, uh, Star Wars, like the Millennium Falcon. You know, you get in there and then you got your turret. It's no, no, no. The game is, is has been out, but the final version is not out. It's still an alpha. So let's go ahead and call the elevator. This will take us to the main location and deck, and you can see there are four different decks. Currently, we're at the sub deck. So let's just start from the top and we'll go to the uh, cartography deck. We don't want to rent it. See how you can rent it for free? You can rent this ship right now for free if you wanted to. Uh, this is the observation area. So if you were planning attacks or whatever you wanted to do, this would allow you to view the system. It's not implemented yet, but <coughs> it's something that they're going to implement in the game at some point where you have like a hollow deck here and you're going to be able to take a look at the star system and move it around and pl plot your course and you know like if you're an explorer or something like that and you're going to uncharted worlds and you need to plot different things this is that uh, area uh, that you could do so so we go off to the left or right here you can see you can see outside <coughs> excuse me there is the actual escape pod <clears throat> and then more places to store your uh, your gear. You've got the airlock, so just think if you're in space, this is what the airlock would be. You need to actually open the door. Um, and what this is, this is going to lead you uh, outside. There is the hangar bay, so you could store a ship inside the hangar bay. Um, and you essentially would just need to open this door here. If you're in space, obviously you need to make sure you have a... Um, Make sure you have, you know, a suit on or whatever so that you don't just die. <clears throat> but this opens up and down below you've got uh, a place where you can put a, sh uh, a flying ship in here. Look how big that turret is right there. That's pretty massive. Obviously, this has gravity on it. So when you're standing right here, even if you're in space, you're all good. 
but the moment that you uh, step outside of this right here, at this moment now, you are now no longer on the gravity. You now are subject to just floating away in space. Uh, but once you're on this right here, then that means that you're completely safe and 100% good to go. So let's go ahead and head back inside. Yeah, there's a lot of good optimization now. A lot better than it used to be, for sure. Let's go back to where we were. <clears throat> As you can see, the same thing on the other side. You can see that's where we were before. Skate pod there. All right, so that's that deck. Now, let's head to the technical deck. Now, this whole stream, we're going to be taking a look at all the different ships that you're going to be able to test out for free. So if you want to play this game, you need to do it right now. It's This free event is only going to last for a few weeks. So get in there and play it while you can. And then hopefully that'll help you make a decision whether or not you want to get the game. And again, if you do end up purchasing the game, make sure you use my referral code. It'll give you a free ship added on to whatever ship you get with your purchase of the game. Uh, again, you have another uh, turret out here. And there's like, I think, uh, ooh, I don't know how many turrets are on this. Five, maybe? I, I believe it's five. I could be wrong. Maybe someone else that's uh, more, uh, that actually has a Carrick. I don't own a Carrick. Um, uh, here is your observation deck for the uh, engineering, I believe. Um, you can take uh, the elevator over here, go into engineering. <clears throat> this is the elevator that'll take you to different parts of engineering, upper and lower. Or you could take the ladder. It's up to you. You can just kind of see how it is. Uh, we're going to be going through each and every ship quickly. I'm not going to be spending too much time because I want to, you know, I want to show everything off as fast, but uh, thorough, of course, because that's what we do here. So let's head back. Now, you notice that, remember, I was standing on top of that. Well, this is the actual um, hangar where you can store your ship. There are only certain amount of ships that will fit in here. Um, so don't assume you can open the door here. Don't assume that that every, you know, ship you can fly is going to be able to fit in here. Uh, it just depends on the size of it, but it is a landing pad. So you will be able to get ships in here to land. All right, and uh, you can see this is another elevator that'll take you. Uh, this area, that's right. No, you can actually get in here. All right, so this is where you've got your, your remote kind of, uh, uh, your drones. Uh, so you're gonna have drones that you can control and you would control those drones uh, right here. I believe there's two of them. Yep. Yeah, RSI has a, a, a portion of their website that tells you which system, like, runs these games. So I don't, it's a telemetry thing, I think. I don't know exactly how to get to there. You have to kind of work your way around the website. But it'll, it'll, like, assess your hardware, something that is similar to what you have, and it'll tell you how the game will run on it if you have any questions. This is where you're going to be able to do maintenance and repair stuff. And here you have the top portion of the bridge. Now, what does this mean? As you can see, here's all a bunch of escape pods for those that need to escape immediately from the bridge. This is the top portion of the bridge. There's two sections of the bridge. Uh, the key, yeah, again, the key to ha running the game good is having good memory and uh, running it on an SSD or high or better. Uh, this will take you to the lower bridge as well. Uh, so you can fly the ship from up here. Uh, this is a remote turret, I believe. Yep, gunner seat. And there's another one. So two remote turrets can be from here. And you can pilot the ship from right here if that's your thing. Uh, so you don't have to pilot from the lower bridge. You can do it from right here as well. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like if you were to, to jump in. This is the command station. 
This is what your HUD would look like. Um, when you're in the ship, you can move everything around so you can take a look and just see how massive this ship really, really is. You too, Marquis. Thank you so much, bud. Peace to you as well. This is just a massive, massive ship. This is one of the biggest ships in the game right now. It's not the biggest ships in the game, uh, but it is one of the biggest in physicalized in the game right now that you can fly and you can own yourself. There's a human player down there. You can actually see them. You can zoom in to where they are uh, right there. That's actually a human player moving around. Hold Y and it'll take you away from uh, piloting. Now, from this point, we're going to go ahead and drop down a level to the lower bridge. And as you'll see, it'll take us one step lower. And here is the lower bridge. As you can see, there are uh, three other co-pilots that you can have. So one person can be in control of shields if you're getting in a fight. Another person can control a power to make sure you have proper power to your shields or power to your weapons or something like that. So if you're the kind of person who likes to play with others, this is a perfect ship for you. And this is where you can pilot the ship from as well. Uh, this is the main pilot seat. You can see how it works. <clears throat> <clears throat> These are called MFDs, so you would, um, I don't really fly the ship enough to know exactly where, you just hit flight ready and then you'd be able to fly it. But uh, this is obviously not going to work right now because they've disabled it because it's inside the hangar. Uh, but these screens will be on and you can control different things from here. But we're not doing that. So we'll continue on. All right, now we have going into the captain's dorm. So obviously this is where the captain sleeps. Captain of the ship or the owner of the ship gets their own location. Uh, eventually you're gonna be able to do certain things from here, like take command of certain aspects of your ship and whatnot, but it's not all really implemented yet, but you can just see the space uh, that you have here. And then when you go into here, this is where your bed's going to be, as well as your bathroom. Uh, so there's your bed. And your bathroom, of course, with a shower and shitter. So you uh, are a vampire, so you cast no reflection. Uh, obviously, they haven't implemented that yet, but I'm sure they're going to probably at some point in the future. But as of right now, it's just a still image that makes it almost look like it's 3D. It kind of, it's a 3D image that moves with you, but it's not the real image of what's behind you. It's more of a picture of what's behind you, kind of, that moves with you. Yeah, see, Anvor, er, or Anvil is not really known for its luxury. When you check out, like, say, the 890 Jump or the 600i, you're going to see a difference in the way the ships are made from the different manufacturers. So, um, Origin, they are the luxury, the BMW, the Audis, the, the Lamborghinis of space, right? So, you'll see just how beautiful everything is and how new. This is more of a workhorse type of ship, a military, civilian, high civilian uh, type of ship, which is not really made for comfort, but made more for kind of uh, portability. All right, so there's the bridge, so let's head this way. So here you have two different areas. One area is gonna be your recreational area uh, with where everyone sleeps, and the other area is gonna be your like food area, kitchen, sorta. So let's go into the food kitchen area. So you come down here, this is where you're gonna be able to have meetings with your fellow uh, fellow versers uh, and because uh, eating is a part of the game you have to eat uh, if you don't eat um, you will lose stamina you won't be able to move as fast you'll literally die from hydration you'll die with lacks of oxygen so you'll have to get oxygen uh, but if you're in an environment that has oxygen you're fine but if you're sh if you run out of oxygen or you're out in space for too long and you didn't bring an, uh, an oxy pin with you or something that gives you extra oxygen, you'll die. I mean, this is a, this is a permadeath style game. This is not implemented yet, but I'm really looking forward to when they actually put pool in the game. 
I think that's going to be a really cool thing. And here is where all the crew would stay. As you can see, we got bunk beds. And you can see this has uh, particularly a little bit of crew. You can have one, two, three, four, five, um, five crew uh, area here. Obviously, with the captain makes six. So, lots of chances. Don't. Okay, so whatever you do, I think don't go into this room. Okay, no, we're good. All right. If you see black. Don't head into the black, because you'll be going into the void and you'll fall through the ship. Uh, obviously, this is where the crew would be, so you've got your shower. Um, and, of course, your mirror with all of your extras and whatnot. I believe the other one has the schnitter in it. Uh, obviously, you have luggage for each individual person where you can put your clothes and whatnot. See, right there, if we were to go through it and it still looks like that, we would fall through space and time continuum. Right now, if we were to go straight in, that's what would happen. There's a door here, so if you click on the door, that disappears, and then you're no longer going to have to worry about it. So, over here should be the Schnitter. Yep. This is where you take care of business after a long day of eating spicy foods. All right, we'll head out. Doors are automatic. You just got to give it a few seconds. Here's the main medical area. This is what I told you before. Say, this is what you want to do, especially if you're in the uh, Aerospace Expo. Got to go through um, quarantine here because this is your med bay. So what you want to do is come up over here, especially if you're playing this and you're at the Expo, this is what you want to do. Come over here. Go ahead and lie down. I think you can do it from here. This is your med bay. We're gonna go ahead and set this as our location. Go over to regeneration. You can transfer your imprint. So what this is gonna do is that if we were to immediately die for any reason, this is where it would take us back. Normally, you would go to the primary residence. So what you would do is you would transfer imprint. And hit confirm. There we go. Now, what's supposed to happen is I would... Uh, we can go ahead and get out now. We don't need to. We can hold Y. Now, if we were to die we would just immediately come right back here. Instead of going back to the bed that we were at when we first logged into the game, this is where we would immediately go to. As long as this ship is here and the ship hasn't exploded, we will be able to spawn in here. Now, if the ship exploded, you won't spawn in here. You'll spawn back at your home base, which is the bed in the apartment. So this is great for if the game all of a sudden lags out or whatever. We'll just come right back here. There's a doctor office, as you can see, on both sides, and a storage room. These are other beds that you can do the same exact thing that uh, these will heal you. So if you sit down, uh, the screens will pop out, and you'll just get healed. Like, say, if you're injured, you could come over to the med bay, and you'll get healed up. Granted, if you have a serious injury, you're only going to be able to get healed up at uh, a hospital on a station, but if you have a less than serious injury, you'll be able to heal up uh, here. This door hasn't opened yet. I'm not sure what it's going to be for, but it's not implemented yet. Um, see into the metal f medical facility there. This will take you to the elevator, um, which again allows you to go to where you want to go. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and call the elevator. We're going to get out and we're going to check out some more ships. Again, I want to be as thorough as possible, but I don't want to spend too much time. This is the biggest ship so far uh, that's in this space uh, or at this the aerospace right now. So let's head to the sub deck. You do not need a hotess. I am playing with a mouse and keyboard right now. Now, you can use a Hotess, 
but you will not be able to, well, no, you actually can use a Hotess to move around if that's your thing, although I don't see why you'd want to do that. Mouse and keyboard is always going to be mostly used for, uh, well, the mouse and keyboard can do every single thing in the game. But let's say you wanted to use a Hotas for flying the ship and mouse and keyboard for your character moving around in first-person combat. You can do so. Or you can use a controller. It's up to you. A controller will do everything. Mouse and keyboard will do everything. Hotas will fly your ship. Way easier to fly with a mouse and keyboard, of course. So but that's completely up to you. All right, there you go. We literally were just inside this massive, massive freaking ship and took like 20 minutes just to explore it. And that's just one ship, guys. That's just one ship. Imagine if you owned this thing, you'd feel like you're on top of the world, right? All right, so let's take a look at some other ships. These are the smaller ships, so. First one we're gonna take a look at is the Arrow. Now the Arrow is one of the best dogfighters in the game. This is one of the fastest ships because it's the smallest and very hard to hit. So imagine, you know, someone piloting the guns on there, trying to hit a ship this small that moves so fast. Very hard to do. So let's hop inside. Hey, babe. When you get a chance, can I get a root beer? Um, all right, so this is what the ship looks like in here. You can just hit R to turn it on. But as I've said previously, it's not really going to work because you're, it's all turned off. So these are not how the ships will really look. They'll, all, the, all the screens will turn on and everything normal. Um, but yeah, here is, this is specifically a dog fighting ship. This is what you're going to be able to do in this ship. Dog fight. You're not going to be able to do cargo. You're not going to be able to do a, uh, a delivery mission. This is a one seater, very small, but it's meant to be a combat ship. So if combat's your game, bounty hunting, whatever, mercenaries, this is what this ship is for. And as you can see, it's got actually a good, decent amount of firepower uh, with the weapons. Even it's got missiles. You can see the missiles on the side. Very nice ship. A lot of people love this ship, especially when it comes to dogfighting. I'm gonna go ahead and get out. Okay. So we took a look at that. Now, if you want to rent the ship while you're here for the free fly event, all you got to do is get semi-close to the ship. And you should see something that pops up that allows you to rent. Hold on. There it goes. All right. So you hold down F. You can click rent. Like, I don't own this ship right now, so I can go ahead and rent. Tells you what your current balance is. I have 127,000 UEC, which is the in-game money. But this will cost me zero because every ship is free to rent. So we just rented it. Now it's in our account, and we can rent it for 24 hours. I think it's 24. It might be 48. But again, you could do the same thing for the Carrick. So if this is the ship that you wanted to rent, step up here just like this. Hold F. Click Rent. Zero. And that's it. Now it's in your local, in or your local inventory, and you'll be able to rent it. All right, let's move on to the next ship. This is the Pisces. So I showed you guys the hangar inside that ship, right? This ship is made to fit inside that ship. All right? Inside that hangar. Now, if you get a specific edition of this ship, if you bought it with real money, uh, some some of that edition would have this already inside it. So you'll technically get two ships at the price of one. Very small ship few guns on the front and this specific one has two on the side as well with some missiles like there are two different versions of this ship one is the expedition edition which actually has the uh the extra two extra weapons on the the nose i believe but this could be your starter ship if that's what you wanted to as well so again you can just rent it for free 
step a little closer and it should, or actually there's a specific spot. Oh, almost had it. There it is. Open door. Obviously this. Okay, it looks like. Oh, we don't have a flashlight because I don't have a suit on. That makes sense. If I had my uh, undersuit on, then I'd have a flashlight, but I don't. So this ship has a few cargo. So if you wanted to to do cargo missions, uh, you could do that delivery box missions. It also has four weapons, so therefore it would be kind of decent somewhat at combat, but I wouldn't recommend this ship for combat. It's not a, it's not as a, as a, a maneuverable as that arrow ship that I just showed you. Um, this is for, you know, let's say, okay, let me, let me give you an example of what this ship would be used for. You own a Carrick, right? The Carrick is a big, massive ship. You don't want to take that Carrick to the planet because it's going to take you a while to land it because it's massive. Gravity is a little different with these bigger ships. It's not as easy to fly in uh, atmosphere of a planet. So what you would do is you would, you know, hover, or you would do a, a, an orbit around a planet or a moon or wherever you're at. And then you would hop in this ship with a couple of your buddies or whatever to go and do something specific. Uh, and that's what this ship is mainly, I would say that's what the ship is mainly used for. I love the look of the ship when it comes to the its uh, HUD as well. I love the look of all the buttons and how everything looks. Pretty nice. It's a small ship, but it does its purpose. It's a sister ship to the Carrick. Yes, this is live. So. Every single day, or should I say, l let me explain it to you this way. This is going to be a little, it's a little tough, tough to explain. Every day is a different manufacturer, but every manufacturer lasts for two days. So this was the manufacturer that started yesterday. There are two expo halls. One is going to be for the current uh, manufacturer of the day. So RSI is in one specific hall. And Anvil is in the other hall. Anvil was just the only one yesterday. Now Anvil has been pushed to the second hall. And RSI is in the main hall. So each and then tomorrow, RSI will be in the second hall. Anvil will be gone. And whatever is the next. You see what I'm saying? So uh, each one lasts two days, just so you guys know. All right. So there you go. These are, uh, we'll just showcase this a little bit. These are different weapons uh, and the size that you can put them on your ship. This is an uh, uh, Omsky uh, 9 cannon. Big, big weapon there. There's different sizes. Different ships have different sizes of weapons. Your smaller ships are going to have the smaller ones. Um, and then, of course, as your ship gets bigger or better in combat, the size of the weapons go up until they become just so freaking massive that it's it's pretty mind-boggling. And again, these are not free to rent, but um, it'll cost you. This one specific, which is a 667 Mammoth Repeater, will cost you 54,000 UAC, Alpha UEC. Whether so. it's innovative specialty craft, Smaller versions of those. All right, let's move on to this one. This one's a very cool ship. How do I? I'm not sure how to compare this ship to any other ships in say in any types of lore, Star Wars, or whatnot. This is a bounty hunting ship. This is called the Anvil Hawk. All right, this is a bounty ship. There are a lot of guns on this ship. Let's just try to find them all. One, two, now the wings will fold out, so that's three, four, there's another one there, five, six, all controlled by the pilot. Lots and lots of weapons on this ship. Really, really cool ship. Now, one one of the, the coolest things about this ship is this is a bounty hunter ship. 
meaning that when it's implemented in the game, right now, all bounty missions, you just take out, kill. But you are going to be able to do, in the future, bounty missions that allow you to keep an enemy alive, right? So this is where you would put them. You would capture them alive, and then you would put them here. Okay, so it looks like they, they took it out for uh, whatever reason. There's going to be something. They took it out probably because they don't want people hiding in here. But uh, there's going to be a little thing that comes out. And you would literally just put them, place them in there. Close it back up. And then you would go off on your merry way and take them to wherever you need to collect the bounty. And that's it. So it's really cool. Or if you wanted to save your game, you can save your game in here right now. You could jump inside and you could log out. It's used as a log out bed kind of seat right now too. But that won't be implemented when the full version is out. So just so you know. This is one of those cool ships that has the uh, the entrance coming from the top and down. Check it out. How do you earn money in this game? There are many ways to earn money. If I were to click F1, it brings up my Moby Glass. This is your big UI that you're going to tell you your life signs. It tells you how much O2 you have. You can see I'm wasting no oxygen right now because this is on a planet. It's in a location where I don't need an O2 tank, so therefore I don't need O2. Uh, it tells you our vitals. It tells you my heart rate's good. I'm doing all right. I haven't been running, therefore I'm not stressed. All of this stuff is implemented in the game. If you start running, your heart rate's going to go up. If your heart rate goes up too fast, it's going to take a while for your heart rate to go down. You're not going to be able to move as well. You're going to be slower. Maybe you got shot in the leg. Well, you're going to be limping because you got shot in the leg. So your heart rate's going to be higher because you're stressed. Your movement's going to be impaired because you were shot in the leg. Well, that's why the medical gameplay came in where you have a, a, a medical tier now that you can, like, heal yourself to where you'll be able to uh, not feel the effects of, say, getting shot in the leg, but in order to heal that shot in the leg, you have to go to a bed or a medical facility to heal your broken leg. It's, <laughs> I mean, this shit is not done in any other type of game of this caliber. It's so amazing how it's all implemented, and that's why I'm so excited for Star Citizen right now and what they've implemented. But as far as missions, I'll get back to your question. You go to the Contracts Manager, and these are all the missions that you can do. So there are general missions, personal missions. Personal usually is piratey type of missions. Um, not always, but you see how this doesn't tell you who it's from. Usually it's from a shady type of thing. Usually when you do mercenary type of missions, hack job, these are going to get you a crime stat, meaning that you're going to be committing a crime if you do this. Just remember, if you're in the personal and you're under mercenary, these are going to be crime-related missions. You complete them, you're going to be wanted, which means players are going to start to come after you, or you could get arrested from the AI. The uh, uh, Whatever sector you're in has a different police force. They'll arrest you. There are locations that you could go where you're not wanted. Those are crime areas. Um, right now, they're working on the pyro system, which is a system that is completely made for pirates um so lots of really really cool stuff being implemented right now so if you want to stay on the good side of the law you always usually unless you do the delivery missions most delivery missions are going to be just fine as far as you doing stuff like that because you're just you're just taking goods from one location to another you're usually not committing a felon or a crime you can also pay your fines or re remove your crime stats so that you can go back to being on the graces of the law these are your good missions that you want to do that if you want to stay on the good side of the law. These are your local delivery routes uh, that have a specific unit of uh, a company that you're working for to do these. So you would pick up the packages from this location and then you would drop them off at these three different locations. So there's three packages and you would deliver each package to a specific location and then you would get paid. Uh, search missions, cargo retrieval, let's say someone lost some cargo, they want you to retrieve it from a wreckage. That wreckage could be on a planet, that wreckage could be in space. You would have to find the package and deliver it to where it needs to go. Uh, 
There are just different types of delivery missions. Investigation, there's a missing client, you're trying to find out what happened to them. That's how you can do that. Bounty hunting, this is when you start your evaluations. You want to become a bounty hunter. Uh, here specifically, this is micro tech. So doing this one right here, every location you start out, let's say you started out in Loreville, which is the planet. Uh, you'll have Loreville services as opposed to uh, Microtech. Um, and then you've got your tracking, training, permits, and certification. This is so that you can do very low risk targets. You'd complete this, you'd pay a $500 fee, you complete the first one, and then all, all of a sudden more bounty hunter missions come. Then you get the next tier. So the next tier will be uh, low risk targets. Then the next tier after that will be medium risk targets. And after that, high risk targets. And after that will be the highest ERTs, uh, which are the hardest to do. The, the ships are going to be massive, so it'll be a lot harder to take out. And then you've got mercenary. Mercenary under here is good. You can do these missions. You always want to accept this mission right here, which is your call to arms. This should be the first thing you do when you open the game and you want to go bounty hunting. Accept this mission. All this means is that any criminal, anyone wanted that you take out will give you money. You're going to come across multiple ships. When you're doing bounty hunting missions, let's say you do this right here. This guy might have three other ships surrounding him. All of them are going to be wanted. Therefore, every ship you take out besides the target ship is going to give you extra money. That's why you want to do those. Then you have these things where you're protecting Microtech. Uh, urgent boarding. This is the 890 jump mission. So 890 jump is the biggest ship in the game currently. Um, someone has hijacked it by a group of outlaws. You need to take them all out. And you get 45,000 alpha UEC if you do so. By taking them out, you're going to fire... A, you're going to take out a few of the ships that are surrounding the 890 jump. You'll do that in vehicle or in, or in uh, combat. And then you'll go inside the ship and you'll use first person combat to actually take out the rest of them inside. And you can rent... Okay, so you can rent uh, every ship for 48 hours, so... Uh, another security contract. All this means is uh, there's locations on each and every single planet. You would go to this location, and you would take out whoever the security says they need to have taken out. Um, different types of combat for every job. You've got accepted. Any mission that you have accepted that you're currently in the process of doing, you can have multiple ones on here. History, they are the ones that you have done previously, so you can see all the missions you've done for the day. Beacons, meaning that if someone is requesting you to pick them up, or someone has died, or not necessarily died, they're in a fallen state, right? You guys remember you play Call of Duty, you play Battlefield, uh, you go into a, a fall-down state. Someone can come and revive you if enough time has happened. So in this game, you don't immediately die. The only way you immediately die in this game is if you are in a ship and someone blows you up in the ship. You're dead. You're not going to be able to be revived. However, if you're doing first-person combat and someone takes you out with, with a, a type of blow, like not a headshot or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, you could be down, but you're not necessarily out. You can set a beacon so that other real-life humans, other real players can come and revive you and you don't die. Therefore, you don't lose all of your inventory that you had on you or you don't lose the ship that you had uh, because you're dead and you go back to wherever it is that you're located. It's a really cool system and the beacon system has been around for a while, but only is it new where you can actually revive people that are down. So it's a down and out kind of state. You guys are used to it and playing other types of games. Um, all right, so I showed you exactly what you wanted to see. So we'll jump back into the game. More ships to check out. All right, so there is the Anvil Hawk. I recommend you definitely rent it and check it out. A great ship. Perfect for bounty hunting. Fast, maneuverable. These ships can be purchased in-game as well. So do not think that you have to purchase these with real money, guys. That's what everyone thinks. Everyone's like, oh, this game is pay to win. Yeah, if you want to pay the money to support the game, you can get this ship. I think it's $90. If you were to just buy this ship at the uh, on the website, if you wanted to buy it outright, say you didn't want to go through the process of, of earning credits to get the ship in-game, you can buy it for 90 bucks. That money goes directly to the developers, okay? You don't have to do it. It's up to you. If a game gives you the option, I am not against microtransactions. If it gives you that option. 
As long as the game is available for you to purchase in-game, it's okay to me. Yeah, you might have to do a few missions to do it. This particular... I'm not sure how much it costs in-game. I think it's a million something. I'm telling you, you can earn a million credits in a few days. Hell, if you play this game for like 10 hours a day, you could probably earn it in one day. It's not that big of a deal. Obviously, if you wanted to earn this ship in game, that's a different story. That's going to be millions and millions and millions of credits. You are not supposed to be able to just to go from zero to this ship unless you just purchase it outright. But if you wanted to purchase this ship, you're going to pay $600. This ship right here to purchase it outright and not go through the means of buying it in game, you are going to pay $600. That's for the hardcore people that want to support the game and uh, make sure the game keeps, you know, getting updates and, and it's paid for. That's fine. You can work your butt off, go through each and every ship here to upgrade to this ship if you want to. Or, you can rent it. Now, it won't be free. It'll cost you some thousands of credits. But let's say you wanted to try the ship for a day and it's not the free fly event. You can do that. You wanted to go cargo running. You just wanted to see what it was like. You know, you got 100,000 credits. I want to see what it's like to run cargo in this ship. Spend that 100,000 credits and rent the ship. You can do that as well. There's options. This game gives you options, people. So anyone that says this game is pay to win just doesn't... They don't take the time to actually take a look at the game and see that it's... It's, it's, it's played off the way you want to play it. You know, you don't want to be a bounty hunter. You don't have to go into bounty hunting. You don't have to get a combat ship. You want to be someone that just does delivery missions or that travels, takes people around. You could do that too. There's other ways of playing this game. All right, let's go to the next ship. This is the, what is it, the Gladiator, I think it's called? You take a look at the ship. Yeah, it's called the Anvil Gladiator. I don't like how... These are AI, right? I don't like how they stand in front of it because then you can't see it. You have to kind of see it from the side. I wish they would uh, move, allow you to be able to take a look at it. This ship is like your bomber. So let's say you're on a planet and you're trying to bomb a city or something. This is what that's for. You got torpedoes. This is the gladiator. Um, a lot of people don't fly this ship because it's not fully implemented yet. The reason is this is a two person ship. You cannot control the turret on top of the ship. You see all that great firepower up there? The pilot doesn't control that. There's going to be something in the game that comes out down the line. It's not out yet. Where you can slave a turret to the pilot. Meaning that you can... It's called a blade, I think. Where you can control a turret from the pilot seat. A lot of turrets you can't control and they're only manned. I mean, you have to get into... Uh, into the actual turret in order to be able to do it. So you, as the pilot, you've got this weapon here, you've got your missiles, and of course you've got your torpedoes that are also inside. There, there, and there. Alright? So, when you get in, you can see there are two different locations to get in. This one, specifically, is the gunner. So let's say we just entered the gunner seats. Now, you are specifically in the gutter seat, so you turn it on wherever the power is. I've, I've never really even been in this ship, to be honest. The flight ready option isn't there. I'm not even sure where you actually turn it on from. Whatever, that, that doesn't matter. But you see that I'm controlling the turret. Not I'm, I'm not even in the pilot seat. That's This is the turret. Now, if you want to do the pilot seat, well, then you come. There we go. Enter pilot seat. Now you'll notice that we're in a different location. See how this is completely different than what you just saw? nice looking ship. It's just not fully implemented yet. Not till they get the blade in. This is a combat ship. It's made for combat, so that's what you're going to do in it.
All right, let's head out. So we took a look at the gladiator. All right, what other ships are in this hall? We've got a lot of stuff to look at, so we'll try to move a little bit faster. All right, so that's everything in this little section right here. Those are specific ship parts, so if you want to update your um, quantum drive so you get to locations faster, let's say you want to update uh, your shields, power management, all that kind of stuff, that's where you can do that with, and there's different sizes for different ships. Obviously, this ship is massive, so the bigger ones are going to be the ones you want for this. You ain't going to be able to fit these other ones in there because they're too small. Let's head to the next area. We are still located in the Zenith. Before we do that, we have another ship to take a look at. This is the Hurricane. This is a beast of a ship. A lot of people love this ship. However, this is a two-person ship. So if you're flying this solo, there's really almost no point right now. You would need to have a friend with you. So if you play this game with a friend and you two want to go out bounty hunting, this is going to blow everybody freaking out of the water because the, the guns on this ship are massive. For a very maneuverable, smaller... Um, this is a ship that you're mostly going to... If you're a bounty hunter, you're going to be playing against the AI in this ship. You're going to see them a lot. The one person or one of the AI is going to be up at the turret. The other one's going to be doing the pilot guns. Pilot guns has two size four weapons, which is really good weapons. Size four is good. But with only two size four, you can still go and do solo. But then you're not getting the full the fullness of the ship. Look at those two right there. There are two on each freaking side. We're going to go ahead and rent it. Meaning that there are four in this specific ship, there are four, see, one, two, on each side. Four size three weapons on just that turret alone. Meaning you have four size three weapons and two size four. This will obliterate anything in this game, and it'll do it in very quick time. All right, you'll see that there are two different locations. One is for the gunner. So you come up here, enter the gunner seat. Same aspect comes down from the bottom and goes up. When the ship explodes, the ship is gone. It's done. You have to claim another ship. Now, what that means is you get this thing called insurance. Right now, all insurance for any game, for any packages you get today is 120 months. What does that mean? Think of it as in real life. If you destroy your ship, you have insurance. That insurance is real time. So right now, if you buy any of these ships today or you get a package today, you get 120 months of insurance. What does that mean? That's 120 months of real life. Now, 120 months does not start until the actual release of the game, which isn't going to happen for at least another few years. So as of right now, think of yourself as having a limited insurance but once the game actually comes out and they say this is the real release date from that date you will have 120 months of insurance on this meaning that you'll be able to claim this ship back and continue to claim it for free for free for free for free for free and claim it and claim it and claim it every time you die grab another one every time you die grab another one every time you die um for 120 months but once that 120 months goes up if you were to die then you would have to purchase the ship in game all over again but you will be able to purchase insurance in the game to continue just like in real life. So hopefully that explains all of that. But right now, every ship is pretty much insured because the game is not out yet. Beautiful ship, amazing weapons. Again, great ship if you want to, uh, to, to do combat with, with a friend. It's good even solo, but only having two weapons in a solo ship even though they are size four, is not as good. Although this ship can be tanky, meaning that it's got good shields and it's got good uh, a good armor on it. So this is a good good all around ship. No cargo, therefore you don't want to do you can't do any delivery missions and you can't do cargo in this mission. So yeah, what's 120 months? Think about it. That's 12 years. <laughs> That's literally when the game comes out. If you're still playing the game in 12 years. Which a lot of people probably still are. This game is meant to be played for a very, very long time after releases. 
are you ever going to have to get insurance on this vehicle? I mean, to be honest, it comes with 120 uh, months. That's 12 freaking years, people, of real life. Real life 12 years. So it's not like you're all of a sudden going to lose this ship if you were to pay for it right now or get it with in-game credits. Just keep that in mind. Again, we're just in the turret right there, okay? Now, let's go to the main cockpit. You see, on most of these ships, if you haven't paid attention, you got to find the sweet spot. You don't normally have to do this, but because you can rent the ships, there's like a double meaning. And sometimes you... There, oh, we found it for a second. Oh, had it. When that little when that little spot oh there it is got it that only happens because you're at the expo it won't happen when you have the ship regular here is how the ship really looks so you would hit z z allows you to look around your ship with your face you can also use things like track ir or uh toby eye tracker which means that where you look on your tv or monitor your character will move so it's more lifelike and whatnot. Pretty cool stuff. Nice view out of it. Looks good. All right. Hop out. Now let's head to the next section of the hall. So we've looked at this. All right, here we go. Got to find out where it is. Uh, there's the front over here. All right. Yeah, see, uh, they've made so much money on this game that I really think that they're going to be able to pull off. This game will probably be out forever, and it's just going to be continue to be updated. That is the plan. Of course, we don't know how things are going to go. We can't assume we're going to know, but that's at least their plan. What you're looking at is the planet Microtech. That is where we currently are. What you see up there, every planet has a space station that orbits it, that you can go to. So there's one here. This is a hollow view. I really like the look of the hollow view. All right, let's keep going. We can't make any predictions until the game is finally released. Everything is hearsay. You got maps of the expo. Um, it does look like, for whatever reason, the map hasn't spawned in, or the textures of the map haven't loaded in for whatever reason. Uh, normally, you would see that crystal clear, but it just lets, it's supposed to let you know what ships, these are the ships we've just seen, and now we're heading into this area, so there's other ships that you can see. But it just hasn't loaded in for whatever reason. Yes, yeah, so you can go to different planets. Bushin Ryu Cat, you are a good man, CSO1. God bless our armed forces. Well, God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat. All right, let's go over here. All right. These specific ships are your Hornets. This is Anvil's bread and butter combat ship, right? These, if you purchase these ships, they're going to be around $100 about $130, I guess, all the way up to about $175, $180, I think, is the Super Hornet. Um, but yeah, let's let's go over them. So we'll start with the main Hornet. These are great combat ships, by the way. This is your regular Hornet. This is the main one, the F7 Hornet. Firepower, you can see, looks like size 3 on uh, the, uh, the right side, size 3 on the left side. Um, and there's other ones too but this one I only right now I only see two but there's more weapons than just the two we'll take a look inside real quick this is uh, this was like one of the first ships you ever saw when the game was first announced this one has the most uh, X-Wing feel to it. Did you just see that opening of the canopy? It feels like this is, this is like the X-Wing of Star Citizen. And you'll see that this is a great cockpit view. 
Oh, I love the look of this ship. I'm thinking about upgrading to the ship. Right now, I've got a saber. Um, a saber is a great stealth combat. Uh, I'm thinking of upgrading to from the saber to the Super Hornet. Not this particular ship, but the Super Hornet version of the ship. I haven't decided yet, um, but we'll see. So you guys can take a look at it. Yeah, I did a stream on um, on Deadpool. Or, uh, sorry, Deathloop. You can check it out. Alright, there we go. Now, this one is the uh, the variant. This is called the Wildfire. Look at, look at the... All this is, it's the same ship as that. But it's a variant, meaning that it's got a different skin. As you can see, the colors are different. And it's got certain weapons on it. So, see, these weapons are already different. You got one there, two there. You see that big one up there? That's a size... I want to say that's a size five. It's either a five or a four. Someone could uh, uh, educate me on that. But the ship looks exactly the same on the inside. This is... This is the upgraded version of these ships. Now, let me tell you something about this one right here. This is it. This is the F7A. This is not available in the game right now. What's going to happen is, excuse me, is once, once the single player story comes out, which is called Squadron 42, once you complete that game, you will get this ship for free. So once you complete, now, once you complete the, the Squadron 42 version of the game, you will get this ship for free. You cannot get this ship right now. You can't fly this ship. They're saving it for you to be able to test it out first in the single player story. There's a few ships that uh, you're going to see that you can only get in the single player story first. Otherwise, they're not going to be available. You can see, look at how massive that is. That's huge. Just on the side there. Another big one up there. Look, you've even got the, the two down in the front. I mean, this is, like I said, this is going to be one of the best ships. I don't know if you can actually get in. Let's see. This ship is going to look better. It's an updated version of, of the Hornet, so it's going to have the newest specs and everything. As you can see, it looks a little different than the ship we saw before. Where's the... Now, again, these screens are not going to work, so... I like the look of this ship, though. I mean, look at that. You've got six weapons. Six. Two Badgers, two Panthers, and uh, two Gatling Revens. Man, this is, this is going to be a beast of a ship. As you can see, it's kind of like the updated version of that right there. That's the Super Hornet, the one next to it. Beautiful looking ship. And I believe if you hit numpad, or what is it? Uh, I thought it was numpad. Maybe it's page down. Uh, I don't remember what. I don't. They must have changed it. They got a, a really great suite of camera options that you can do on this. I have a few different ships. Um, yeah, it looks like it's glitching right now when it's doing that. So you just, like I said, it's an alpha. But this is the Super Hornet. This is the one I'm thinking about getting. I mean, you can see you got one, two, three, and then four on the other side, five and six. So there's six weapons here as well. Looks exactly the same inside, except this one is a little different. There are two seats. There is the pilot can control that, but there's also a second pilot that can control just that as well. So if you wanted to go two players, then you, meaning that It'll take longer for enemies to see you when you come up close to them. That's all that means. Uh, you carry a smaller IR signature. And this is the tracker. This is, uh, you see this got like this little antenna right here. The Hornet tracker is made specifically for scanning. So if you, this is your ship, if you want to be, a, if you want to scan things for whatever reason. So I'm going to rent a few of these. 
I'll rent the, uh, the ghost. Remember, they're all free, guys. The only one you can't rent is that right there. It's here. It's in-game, but it's not flyable. As you can see, there's no... It doesn't give you the option to rent it. Yes, there is ground combat. Of course, it's already in the game. Yeah, there's, there's ground vehicles. I'm going to show them off here in just a second. If you want to do ground vehicle combat. And there's also first person. Like, you see myself right now. I can equip a weapon and start shooting like first person. It's always a good measure to go ahead and rent every ship that you want to test out. Okay. So we saw this. You see all these seats? You can sit down in every single one of them. This game is so meta. Enjoy the views. All right, let's leave this hall. Now look, we have been playing for an hour and 32 minutes and we haven't crashed yet. That's good. It's good. Alright, there was that main hall, so now we're going to move to the right. I know, sitting down seems like something. Well, why would I want to sit down? Immersion, guys. Immersion. You can sit anywhere that has a chair. I mean, there's just... It's, it's, a, it's an immersion type of game. Alright, here we go. Now we got some different ships. Yeah, for whatever reason, these are just not loading in like they should. Alright. Now, these are very nice ships. We're going to go inside and take a look at them. I'm going to try to be a little bit faster than I've been. So this is the Terrapin. What is the Terrapin? Well, let's just, let's just take a seat and take a look at it. Except we're turned the other way. All right. Well, uh, forget that. Let's stand up. This is the Terrapin. This is an exploration ship. So if you want to be an explorer, scan new star systems find new stuff, be the first to see a planet, be the first to see a moon. This is what this ship is for. This is called the Terrapin. Step inside. Step in this seat if you're trying to use your scanning capabilities. This has a, uh, a toilet. A bed for you to sleep in, of course. If you want to do delivery missions, you could bring the delivery box in here and you're good to go. Not really a combat ship. You would never want to do combat in this ship. But this is a very tanky ship. So if you're an explorer and let's say some pirates are trying to steal your ship, it's going to be harder for them to do it because this ship is very tanky, meaning that it has good armor and good shields. Uh, here's how the cockpit looks. I love the cockpit of this ship, by the way. Very nice looking ship. It's got VTOLs, so that means that you can hit a certain button, which will allow you to travel in atmosphere better. Then when you get to space, you hit a different button, and then it goes into regular flight mode, which allows you to travel flight better while you're in space. I love the look of the ship, too. It's got a great look to it. Honestly, though, not a lot of people use the ship right now because the exploration isn't in the game yet. Therefore, no one has a real reason to use it when there's better ships suited for what's in the game currently. All right, so there's the Terrapin. This is the Valkyrie. This is a drop ship. This is a ship that if you're doing a mission on a planet and you want to, and you got like uh, 10, 15 of your friends, and you're in the same server and you guys want to have some fun, this is a ship made for that. This is a drop ship, meaning you're going to land on you're going to land on a planet. You're all going to get out and start doing some combat, some first person combat. I'm not excited or concerned for anything yet on the new Splinter Cell because there's just not enough information yet. All right, this is the Valkyrie. We're going to rent it first. Zero again. Get it for 48 hours, so 
once you're done with this stream, click the link in the description, Robert Space Industries. Use my referral code that you see in the top right of this video. It's also in the description. And check out the game for free. You don't have to pay a single dime. If you decide you want to get a ship, purchase it, get the game, and uh, join me on some adventures, then do so and just make sure you use that code. You can fit a few ships in here. You can fit a few ground vehicles in here because this space is big enough. There's also room for cargo now. At, at first, they didn't have cargo spots, but now they added them. So if you want to do cargo in this ship, you can do that as well. There's also turrets, as you can see. You can deploy heavy machine guns, so if you're trying to land, um, you can use this to do so. Pretty cool. Although I'm pretty sure this is currently not on to allow myself to shoot people right now. Like I said, it's a dropship. You guys know what dropships are. You know what the purpose of them are for. If you go back here, open the door. This is where everyone will sit. Think of aliens, right? You guys watched aliens, you know, when the guys were in the dropships as they were dropping down into the planet. This is something that they were kind of like they were on, so has that kind of feeling to it. It sits 20, 10 on each side. There's a turret here. Go to the other side. Here's the other 10. Now, you can go upstairs via the ladder. This is where the crew is going to stay. Uh, you've got a toilet, a schnitter, and a shower. You've got uh, a bed on this side. Two more beds. Another two beds. Lots of beds. This is Benny's the Carrick. And another turret. Go up in here. You've got remote turrets or gunner seats. Come down here. Make sure you shut. Because the whole thing about this is that whole area is subject to space. There's no if you have the back open, right? There's the airlock is open, which means you need to shut this if you want to be in civilian attire and not have a mask on uh, and waste oxygen. So as long as this is shut, everything that happens outside, if a breach in the hall or anything like that happens, as you can see, and that's open for whatever reason, all this can be sucked out into space. So you've got to be careful. That's why you want. That's why that door is there to shut. No, this is not too big for that role. Trust me. You'll see some of the other dropships in the game. You'll see that this is the perfect size for it. Again, I like this cockpit as well. Beautiful ship, right? Really get the sense of scale of this entire game. We've only been in this one expo. We haven't even seen the other expo hall yet. It's crazy, right? Let's head down. I remember when all of these ladders used to mean certain death when the game first came out. <laughs> now they don't kill you for the most part <laughs> but the occasional death can still happen all right so we saw the terrapin but i didn't rent it so let me go up to it and rent it there we go next up this is the other ship that's not available in the game yet. It's only available once you complete or do something in the um, single player story. This is another beast of a ship. Can't rent it though. This is the F8 Lightning. Look at the weapons on this. All right, just take a look. One, two, look at how big that sucker is. Then you have this one. That's another big one. 
Same thing on the other side. There, there, and there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six weapons. Oh, wait. There's more. Right there. Boom. Look at that. Six, seven, eight. There are eight weapons. I'm, I'm saying this correctly. Eight weapons on this ship. This is going to blow, but it's not available. It's only available if you complete the single player story when it finally comes out. I don't know if you can get in this ship or not. Let's see. You can't. Okay, sweet. It is. It's the kill everything, isn't it? Oh, I love it. This is going to be a beast when it's out. Looks great. Uh, I, it's probably, I would consider this to be a medium fighter. But look at that, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, freaking seven, eight. Gosh, this is going to be just ridiculous. What sizes do I think they are? To me, that looks like a size... Possibly a four and a size three or size two. Uh, probably two size threes there. Size four and a th two and looks like two size twos. Um, but I can't 100% tell. I'm not sure. Six size threes and two size fours. Yeah. Jeez. Six threes and two fours? Are you kidding me? That's going to blow a... F that's going to... Oh my gosh. This thing is going to have the opportunity to take out a freaking hammerhead. Even... Well, that's nothing. This is going to be able to take out a capital ship. My gosh. All right. Well, there's all the ships. I just wish you could... Can't fly it, though. All right. We have check out Zenith Hall. Look, see, this one actually shows. All right, we need to go to the lower level because this is where the new ships, the new combat ships or vehicle ships are. They're not ships, they're vehicles. I got to figure out how to get there. Uh, it's next to the Pisces. Okay. Now we're going to go to the bottom level. Almost at 100 likes, everybody. Help us get there. Really helps the channel out. If you love the content on the channel, think about becoming a supporter or a member or a Patreon. It uh, helps me to do this full time. This is how I get paid. I only get paid uh, via whatever members and Patreons and stuff like that. So if you want to support the channel, you can do so by using those links in the description. All right. Here we go. This is the Anvil Ballista. This is a ground vehicle. As you can see, there are torpedoes on this ship. So this is a, this is not ship, this is a vehicle. This is meant for, these torpedoes are meant for if you're on the ground and you have a ship coming in trying to destroy you, well, you can aim at those ships and take them out with these torpedoes. That's pretty much what that's meant for. Let's go ahead and hop inside. Go ahead and win it as well. These types of vehicles will not show up when you're at a regular ship. Uh, when you're looking at all your ships and you're taking them out in the hangars. They show up when you are at specific vehicle hangars. Uh, if that makes sense. Alright, so you can see you've got your pilot. You can see the look there, almost the same type of look as your other ships in the Anvil series. Here you have a gunner seat. Um, and that's about all, about all that's inside here. A little bit smaller, that's the, that's the only habitable area. Now we're going to take a look at the brand new ship, just came out yesterday. 
It's flyable, it's ready for you, it's not a ship, it's a vehicle, I keep doing that. That's, yeah, that's why that one didn't have it, but this one does. So let's listen to the new thing on it. This is the brand new vehicle that just came out yesterday. Despite the aerospace in its name, Anvil has hardly been limited to the skies. For example, the tough and rugged Atlas vehicle platform was developed to help conquer the unforgiving landscape found on moons and planets alike. Both the Ballista and the Spartan were both built from this design foundation, proving its adaptability. All right, here we go. This is called the Spartan. Brand new. This is going to be, instead of torpedoes, you have a turret, obviously for ground vehicle combat. Let's head inside. This is a lot bigger inside. You'll notice that it has a, a door here. Takes you to the driver's seat. Then, oh, fine. Just shut the door on me. I don't care. There's another door here, I believe. Yep. So many different ways to enter the ship. And it's, and you have a lot of room for passengers if you want to transport them from one location to another. And of course you have the turret. Uh, I'm not sure how to get into the turret. Connects it out the back as well. Maybe that's uh, controlled by the pilot. So probably, which means the pilot will control the turret. This just came in, so this is brand new, only came out yesterday, and you can get it. I think it's $80 if you decide to get it with real money, but it's super cheap. It's going to be. When a ship or a vehicle comes out, the first patch that it comes out, you can't buy it in-game, but after one patch, it becomes available to buy in-game. This was only going to cost you probably maybe 200,000 credits. Which you can literally get that in like 30 minutes of playing the game. Depending on what missions you're doing. If you're doing cargo and you have a big ship to do cargo, you can literally get it in one mission, probably 10 minutes in the game. And you'll be able to buy it forever. So I don't recommend paying outright money for something like this when they're so cheap in game. It looks like I can carry probably about maybe uh, 10 or 8, I think, Marines. Okay, so you saw that. Now, here is one of the ships that's on hollow view, meaning it's not available in the game yet, and they don't have a model built for it yet. They're currently working on it. This is the new Anvil, what is it, the Liberator? Yep, Anvil Liberator. So this, okay, it doesn't look like it's big, right? This is a massive ship. Guys, it's got two hangar bays on it for small ships got one in the uh, actually it's got three it's got one in the front and two on the top um so yeah this is a massive ship so see that right there that's the cockpit so let that tell you just how massive this ship is i know this hologram makes it or uh, hollow mode makes it look uh, small but i assure you this is a massive massive ship than what it looks you can even roll up vehicles into the back um so yeah, okay, well there's, it's, the ship is not out yet though. This ship also costs about, what is it, $500 if you want to get it with real money? Otherwise it'll be a few million probably um, in game once it's finally out. All right, there you go. We have searched everything in Anvil. Now it is time to move on to what just came out today, which is RSI. It's been an hour and 49 minutes just on one expo. I, you know, that's the whole purpose of these. When it's the anniversary sales and stuff that's going on, I want to show off the game for those of you that have not had a chance to really see it, so. Wait a second. <laughs> have I been to this hall? I think I did. Yeah. I th what? I'm pretty sure I've been to this one. Oh yeah, that's just a, that's just a different way out. Okay. Whether it's innovative specialty All right, so we're gonna head out, and we're a little parched, as you can see. Our water level, if you look at the bottom left, is 81 percent. 
which means we need to do a little drink. So what are we gonna do? We got some pips. Feel free to take a look around. We've got a pretty good selection. I'm gonna take some Vesta. Good purchase. There you go. Whether it's stepping into an unknown system or coasting the well-traveled routes of the home sector, how you get there is half the fun. Find your next craft of choice at the 2951 IAQ. Dare to fly. Drink it all, buddy. All right, it's all done. You just gonna throw it away. All right, we still got it in our hand. Where is the trash can? All right, this is always the toughest part. Place. Trash. Here we go. Perfect. Nice to see you again. Now, if you notice, you no longer see the uh, the oxygen. So if we hold F, it'll all show up. And then you press right mouse. 100%. So what we just drank filled our uh, water level, so we're no longer dehydrated. And you want to keep your levels up. This is our temperature inside. This is a good temperature. Our health is 100%. And we have, we're not overdosed on any medication. So therefore we're 0% on that. This is what you need to do to feed. So we're, we're hungry, but 98% is still quite good. So therefore there's no real reason to, uh, no real reason to eat anything right now. But that is a huge part of the game. This is a truly meta game. You're going to need to stay hydrated. You're going to need to stay properly fed. All right, let's head to the next expo. Again, this is the last day of this specific all here. So everything you see from Anvil will be gone tomorrow. Your sh if you rented the ships, they'll still be available as long as you haven't reached the 48 hours. But as far as being able to take a look at these ships up close and personal, it's going to be gone. And what's in the Apex Hall will be moved to the Zenith Hall, and these will be gone. So now, let's check out the Apex Hall, which is from November 20th to 21st. Robert Space Industries. All right, here we go. Bold spirit. It looks like that's having a little hard time running. I got it. This is the main hall, by the way. Just don't go out of style. And the true classics never die. Whoa, hey, hey, Spooky, why did you, uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, Spooky, why did you, uh, ban Bushin Ryu Cat? What did he, what did he say? Hold on. Whoa, why did, Spooky, why did you do any of that? Okay, yeah, definitely ban, uh, Baby Yoda. But, um, there's no reason to, uh, Well, I think you accidentally did both. Uh, um, so sorry about that, um, Boosin. You're not banned anymore. You were banned for a split second because she accidentally hit... She accidentally hit you as well. But you, you're good now. It's prey never stood a chance. That's all right. I'm just glad uh, Shadow saw that in time. I love how they play these videos. That's so great. Just, I, I can't wait to be able to watch movies inside the verse while I'm in my ship and we're traveling a far distance from one, you know, uh, solar system to another. Be able to watch movies and stuff. It's going to be pretty cool. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at this hall here. Some things just don't go out of style. While it may be 
That's a little hard to hear. So let me step further away from the TV so I can actually hear this. While it may be commonplace to sail through the stars, we should never lose sight of the wonders of space flight. From discovering new jump points, unearthing lost ruins, or setting new speed records. Famed artist Arudo Divani created this unique portrait series as a tribute to the diverse array of people who eagerly climb aboard their ships and dare to fly. Oh, you can definitely tell the cinematics team love making cinematics. All right, here we go. There's a real player person right there. Okay, and it's time for RSI, folks. And I'm dead. Okay, I'm not dead. All right. Obviously, that was a glitch and not supposed to happen. Be careful right here as you can easily, for whatever reason, almost die while you're trying to make your way up here. <laughs> but we're still alive, although we did lose some health. So the only way we would be able to, and I don't think I have anything, uh, utility. I've got a, I've got a med pin. I didn't break it. Okay, I didn't. It doesn't look like I broke any bones. So I've got five med pins. I'll put uh, one of the med pins in my hand. Exit. Hit C. Oh, it doesn't. Look, if you're in civilian clothes, I guess you can't do that. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Uh, inspect place. Carry store. There we go. Okay. Hold on. Oh, did it drop? May have dropped. Oh, no, here it is. It's right there in our hip pocket. I'm going to drop it. There it is. Now I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to use it. There we go. Now look at our health. Our health just went back to 100%. Now look at the pills. Down here. We're... This is... You can overdose in this game. If you take too many pills, if you take too many injections, medical stuff, you can overdose. So you don't want that to reach 100%. If it reaches 100%, it means you overdosed and you could die. So, but as you can see, our health is back to 100. And that's what I was saying is there's a lot of survival elements in all of this. And of course, accidents like that are going to happen when you're coming up stuff. Ran you'll die just randomly and you'll be like, what the heck? But it happens. It's just, it's an alpha. Some historians credit Robert Space Industries with the invention of modern spaceflight. For founder Chris Roberts, the prospect of making space travel more accessible was a lifelong dream. And when his company unveiled their prototype, Quantum Core Engine, in 2075, suddenly space travel didn't seem that fantastical anymore. And Chris Roberts is also the creator of the game. So uh, I had a few questions here. When you meet live players, can you make friends? Of course. You can walk up to a player. Now, I've had the chat off just so you guys can see the game. But if I hit F12, there's the chat. I can go in here and say, hi, everyone. And there you go. You just talk to the entire server. People might reply back. You can talk to people. You can meet up. A lot of people will allow you to, to uh, check out ships. Let's say you don't have a ship and you want to test something. You could say, hey, does anyone have this ship that I could test out? And some people will just allow you to, to fly it and test it out. Uh, it's a great community. Uh, there's also griefers with any multiplayer game. Some people are just going to be out to want to kill you. So you have to be careful. Uh, but you can walk up to a person. You can invite them to your contacts and you can have friends. You can invite your friends into your game so you guys can go on adventures together. whatnot. I mean, it's that simple. Uh, Spooky said um, something about uh, running on your computer. Uh, yeah, so you can... Um, this game will be able to run. I mean, 
Obviously, you want a, the best computer you possibly can, but you'll never know until you give it a shot. Download it, give it a shot, see if it'll run on your computer, and then start, if it will, start letting the magic happen. You know, why not have some fun? Also, by the way, this game has some of the best music. Yeah, in, in any video game, I love the soundtrack to this game. It's so great. Okay, let's check out some of these ships. You'll notice these front four are the main RSI ships. These are the Constellation series. You can see that they are massive ships. They're beautiful ships. And I absolutely 100% love the Constellation series. Okay? Okay. to think that RSI makes one of the smallest ships on the market and one of the biggest. It would take about 50 auroras laid end to end to equal the length of one mighty Bengal carrier. <laughs> it would take 50 auroras laid end to end to equal the length. Wow. That is crazy. Now these, none of these are, I'll show you the auroras. Um... And the bingo carrier is not out yet, unfortunately, but that just tells you how massive the ship is. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I guess we'll look at uh, this one here first. Since its introduction in 2712, the RSI constellation has been reimagined countless times, proving itself as varied and long-lived as Robert Space Industries itself. It has been a cargo hauler, an explorer, a luxury liner, and more. When asked what's next for the constellation, RSI designer Deshandra Lewin said, Whatever it is, we will always strive to balance innovation with the tested features that pilots have come to rely upon. Attention visitors to the Ooh, the Buckeyes are beating the crap out of Michigan State right now. Life is good. Man, that is great. 49 to nothing. All right, so here we go. Uh, I have these ships. Uh, I have some of them. Let me explain what I do. So when you have a ship that is not flyable in the game yet, you get what is called a loner. So I have a ship that's not flyable yet. It is called the Corsair. It's a Drake ship. It is a combat focused ship. Uh, but since it's not in game, you get a loner that is in game. So that way you don't, if you purchase a ship, you don't just for whatever reason, because it's not in game yet, you get you get to fly a different ship. Uh, it's just, you know, because they want to give you something even though the ship that you want is not in the game yet. It's being made currently. I believe the Corsair is supposed to come out sometime early next year. So we'll see when that comes out. But one of the ships that you get is the Constellation and uh, I think it's the Andro it's either the, and the Andromeda or the Aquila that you get as a loner. So I have one of these in my hangar bay but necessarily i don't own the ship it'll go away at a certain point once the other ship comes in all right so this is the aquila now one thing you're going to notice is that all of these except that ship right there have the same type of interior so i only really need to look in one of them as all of them have the same these three have the same interior However, that one has a completely different interior, and I'll show you that one in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get in. We're gonna start from here. And you gotta look down so you can go up. Start with the cockpit. All right, so here is the cockpit. You have two turrets, one at the top, one at the bottom. They're both man-made. This is a avionic stage that you're going to be able to control. Um, and you have two co-pilots and a pilot. I'll show you what it looks like to be inside the pilot seat. Very nice looking ship. One of the, one of the best cockpits, I think in the game although the only thing that i think that sucks about it is the limited view because uh obviously you have a lot of struts 
so that takes away some of the view that you get. This is also a very slow maneuvering ship, meaning that if you want, if, if you're trying to be a dogfighter, this is not the ship for you. Although this ship has amazing weapons. However, if you want to be a dogfighter, this is not going to be the ship for you. You can take out ships very easily with this ship. I mean, this got massive firepower. But like I said, it's not meant to be a dogfighter. It's too big for to be a dogfighter, but it is good in combat. Um, this is the exploration variant, meaning that this ship, I believe, comes with a Ursa rover. Uh, which so you land on a planet and you want to travel around the planet. It comes with a vehicle for you to travel around the planet with. Attention visitors to the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Please remember to stay high. Beautiful looking ship, though. The other cool thing about uh, the Constellation series is some of them, most of them, three out of the four, come with a snub fighter. What does that mean? We'll check it out in just a second. So we'll go to the habitation area. This is the habitation. You've got a uh, place to eat. Table comes out. Storage, obviously, uh, lockers. Uh, the, the lavatory, or the head, or the little John uh, that uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights likes to call it. Um, four beds. These also are escape pods, meaning that if you want to use it as an escape pod, uh, the capsule will kind of close and it'll eject out of the ship and you'll be able to call in a beacon for someone to come and rescue you. There's oxygen in there and hopefully you'll be able to survive. That's the whole point of it. Uh, but then you come out here. This is what it's like with the lights off. It'll look totally different when the lights are on. So I know this might be hard for you to see right now. Um, Unfortunately, these ships were made earlier in the life cycle, so they don't have the lights that a lot of other ships have, um, which they'll be upgraded at some point. Let me go ahead and turn on the lights. Uh, we can turn on the power, but I don't know if the power to the lights will come on or not. I guess I'm going to find out. Now, it says power is actually on right now. So, yeah, so the lights are not turning on just because of the parameters they set. But yeah, so uh, it's going to be a little hard to see inside a little bit, but you won't have that problem when you take the ship out yourself. The lights will be on. All right, so what you got here is if you go down there, that is your cargo. You can store missiles. You've got uh, an airlock for docking. Again, cargo, or you could store a vehicle. Gravity generator, other things. And then when you come back here, you have a snub fighter. So you can literally get inside this. And this detaches from the ship. And it's a snub fighter. Fly it in space. It's got weapons on it as well. Looks like two size ones. And if you need protection, this ship is supposed to help you get a little protected. So you have a little extra firepower. And it comes with the ship. It comes with most of them. The only one I believe it doesn't come with is the Taurus. Which is the lowest version of this ship, which is the cargo variant. All right, what we'll do is we'll exit via cargo bay. All right. So there's, if I could find it, it's over here, okay? Come over here. Where is it at? I think I found it. Yep, there it is. A little hard to see right now. There you go. Perfect. All right, let's move on. Now, as I said previously, this is the 
Where'd you go? There you go. Then rent it. This is the um, this is the combat version of this ship. So this is gonna have the most uh, missiles and the best weapons. Uh, it looks exactly the same inside, and you still have a snub fighter. There's no reason to go inside it. Although I will tell you this, the front cockpit is a little different. If you look at the struts, you'll see that it's more angular and round there. And you'll see that it's more capped off at a point here. So you see how it comes up at a point where that one is definitely more round. So the cockpit view is a little differently, but that's the only thing that separates it. This, these two have the same uh, thing. However, this one is the Taurus. This is the one with the most cargo meaning that this one has a bigger cargo bay. So we'll open up the cargo bay just to show you. The cargo bay is significantly longer on this one, and there is no snub fighter, but it has way more cargo space. So if we were to open this up. This is significantly, uh-oh, okay. little glitch there. This one is significantly longer than any of the other cargo bays. Meaning you can almost probably fit two, two vehicles in here and way more cargo. Because it, before there was a door. Do you remember the door that was like right here? And then it went to another door that went into the back of where the snub fighter was. Well, they took out that section and they made it more cargo space. Yes, these ships are a little bit more expensive. Taurus comes in at like 190 and then the uh, Andromeda comes in at about 225 or something like that. And then the Aquila comes in at over three. And then the last one, which is the most expensive of all the variants in the Constellation series, is the best one in my opinion. This is the Phoenix. This is the luxury. And I mean luxury. You saw the inside of the Connie already, right? This inside is going to blow your mind. Now remember, when you get these games, when uh, this, this ship is available in game, so you can get it for a few million, like two million, I think. Although this ship here, this, this one specifically is about five million, where the Taurus will probably be like just at two million, and the other ones will be right around two to three million, which you can earn, I wouldn't say easy, but if you put a little effort into the game by doing missions, you can earn it. However, this ship's going to take you a little longer because this is this is the Mac Daddy of all the constellations, and it's a beautiful ship. Same firepower as the other ships. It's got a snub fighter. However, this is, excuse me is the better snub fighter. There's two snub fighters you can get: the Archimedes and um, I, I don't remember uh, the Merlin. The Merlin and the Archimedes. They're both the same ship. They're just a little slightly different. This one has four weapons, better firepower, better protection. We're gonna enter via here. Notice how this cargo bay is significantly smaller. It's, it's one half the size, right? Cause the other one would go out and continue. Well, it would continue from the back here. So you'd have two and then go all the way out to the end there. Um, but here we go. Let's go inside. This is gonna blow your freaking mind, people. All right, first off, you guys remember that once you came up in the, um, uh, Aquila, the first ship that we looked at in this series, you saw in the top of the ship, you saw you could literally see the ladder that you would come to and you'd have to take a ladder up on that side or you'd have to take a ladder up on that side. Well, this is a little different. You have an elevator. So, looks like the elevator's currently down and it's down because it says up. Well, let's go up. Huh. This is a little... What's, 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 oh, what's the, what the heck? This is an actual inside that has a freaking bar to get Stone Cold drunk on those long space adventures. It's got a table, lots of great views. Seating, of course. What's this? It's got a freaking hot tub, you know. When you, when you meet a lady and you want to take her for a ride in your sweet hot tub in space. All right. That's right. 
this this is your luxury ship and i'm overselling it of course it also so let me let me let me tell you this maybe you've played elite dangerous maybe you have no idea what the heck elite dangerous is and you're like uh that i don't know what that is elite dangerous is another space game it's like this kind of and in that game they have a thing called passenger missions which means you can get a ship that is like a is like a bus or it's or, or it's like the titanic or something like that where you you transport others that pay money for you to take them from one location to another either to sightsee or they just want to go from one location to another so this is what this ship is for it's a luxury passenger ship meaning that you'll be able to accept missions where you'll take people with money obviously because this is not a cheap ship and take them on a sightseeing adventure so they get a room they get uh, their own place to 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 be um and there's other types of luxury ships that do this, especially in the origin line, which today is not an origin day, so you can't see that ship uh, or those types of ships. But uh, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So let's go back here first. Uh, again, this is that little area that you have before. And here is your snub fighter that's in the back. But as you can see, it's a beautiful ship. There will be a bartender eventually that you'll be able to hire to serve drinks to your guests. Um, it's a whole system. It's crazy. You want some peppermint schnapps? How about some Ruthen vodka? Only the best. Again, you can sit down in all of these chairs. Very comfortable. Lots of great views out of the ship. And then we have two other passenger cabins with fish tanks. A little bit smaller, so obviously the person staying in this one is going to not have as much money as the person staying in the other big room. And there's two of them. These are all for passengers, just so you know. Now, you come over here. This is the habitation area. You guys have seen this. This is all going to be the same. Just a little bit more. Looks a little bit better, nicer. Same thing here. Here's your airlock. And here you go. Same thing. Although, turret down, turret up. And there you go. Again, this is the ship that I recommend you try to work for. Because you get everything that the Constellation gets. But you get a little bit more luxury in it. I think is the best. All right, so we took a, we t we've taken a look at RSSI, RSI's main ships. Yeah, it could be used for an organization. I mean, there's so many different things that you can use these ships for. But those are the four main ships that you see out here. So let's take a look at another. And again, you've got, you know, different weapons that you can equip on these ships. Just for scale, I mean, you can see, scale-wise, I mean, it's... These ships are massive. Crazy question, huh? Can you have a job here as a rescue team? Starship used to... Yes. So there is a medical profession in the game. It's going to be in the game. Right now, only Tier 1 is implemented. But there is a ship from Drake, which is a medical ambulance. And you'll be able to administer drugs and do stuff like that. Kind of like an ambulance driver. So yes, there is a medic profession in the game. It's halfway implemented right now. There's, there's more coming. Uh, usually if something that you delete, if you delete the user folder and it doesn't fix it, then you just need to reset your character and then everything should be back to normal. Uh, you can find that on your settings page. All right, this one looks like it's working. So we are currently here and we're about ready to head to see the Auroras. These are your starter ships, guys. So once we go in here and take a look at this, this is the, sh this is the lowest ship that you're going to be able to get into. The, the cheapest ship, should I say. Here are your starter ships. First off, we'll take a look at the Mantis. 
What is the Mantis? The Mantis is a ship basically designed for one thing. That is to be a pirate. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, you could be a uh, you could be a bounty hunter in this ship too, but I think it's better to be a pirate. What would the ship be used for then, you say? It's the only ship that has a quantum entanglement in it, meaning that when a ship is in quantum drive, which means it's moving beyond the speed of light, or whatever they call it in this. Um, this ship can take them out of it. So if someone is traveling really, really fast, you turn on your quantum field, you can take them out so you can have pirates ready to uh, take over whatever ship you take out of quantum. That's what this ship is mainly used for. So we'll take a look inside. It's got it inside to it. There's your quantum field thing there. All right, looks like something. There we go. Okay. Choose the elevator. We'll go up. This is a nice ship. You know, it's got a bed if you want to log out and sleep and whatnot. The only thing this doesn't have is I don't see restroom. It has a place for coffee and whatnot, but it doesn't have a bathroom. Unless... I don't know. Oh, no, it does have a bathroom. I have been mistaken. It's got a shitter. And you can sit on the shitter. And you can shit on the shitter. Sorry, that was very obnoxious. Plaid. They've gone to Plaid. Um, yeah. Uh, let's enter the ship. Enter it from back here. I guess it... Okay, that works. This one's got uh, see-through MFDs. You can't see them right now, of course. But if they were on, I assure you, they're gonna you're going to be able to see everything you need to see. They're just... They just turned them off for uh, these purposes here. It's a nice ship. Doesn't have a lot of firepower, though. I think it just has two size threes. Maybe someone could tell me if I'm wrong. Are they two size fours? Or are they two size threes? Not a lot of firepower. Some people do have this ship, especially if they want to be a pirate. And that whole circle thing is the quantum field. It's a nice ship, though. I think people like this ship. It's not, it's not going to be a ship that I will ever use because I never plan on being a pirate in this game. I'm a goody two-shoes, so I will always be the ones taking out the pirates as opposed to being the pirate. That's just how I prefer to play, but everyone's different. But it's got one of the best views in the game, as you can see. It's almost unobstructive. Very nice view. All right, here we go. These are your starter ships. These will cost the least amount of money. If you get a package to get into the game, I think it's $40, and you're going to get one of these ships. I don't remember which one it is. It's not the CL. The CL is for trading, so that means this one has some cargo. Right there, yeah, you can see it. You'll be able to stack cargo in here. Right now, you, you can't really do it. We're gonna have we're gonna rent pretty much every ship ship that you can rent. I'm not gonna look inside that one. They all are gonna look the same inside. We'll choose one. What is this one? This one is the ES. I think this is the cheapest ship. If you already have a package in this game, this only costs twenty dollars. This would only be about twenty dollars, which means this is the cheapest probably ship to buy in the game. If with in-game money, probably only 100,000 credits will get you this. All right, now we go to the other side. Um, yeah, if you want to talk to the developers at any point, you go to the website, and then you can find out how to do it there through the uh, support and community tabs. Uh, take a look at the website, look around, and uh, you'll be able to see how you'll be able to do it. 
All right, which one's this one? This one is the LX. This is the Luxury Pathfinder. So this one has the best weapons, I believe. Um, I think it's this one that has the better weapons to start with. You can see it all looks the same. This is the MR. This is the one that comes with the package you buy. So if you spend 40 bucks to get the package, which is the cheapest package you could get, this is the ship you're going to have. Okay? So this will be the one that we'll take a look inside. Now, why did I say that this one is a good one to get? Because it has a bed. So this is the one that you can do delivery missions with. Which some people really like delivery missions. You see? There's a bed right here. You can lie down and sleep in the bed to save, which is a big thing for a lot of people because they don't want to always have to start up on a planet. Sometimes they want to just be exactly where they left off when they're playing the game and they come back to it a day later or whenever they're coming back. So, all right, Dominique, if you go to your, go to the website, then you go to settings or account and then hit settings. You're going to see the thing there where it'll tell you where to reset your character. It's on the website. You can't do it in game. Now we'll take a look at the uh, pilot seat. So Voss, yes. So the referral code will get you in with a ship. Mm -hmm. uh, use the what? What? This is what's going to happen. Let me explain the referral code for those of you that don't know. So you don't have to use the referral code. But if you use my referral code, which is in the top right or in the description, it's going to get you a free ship when you purchase the game. So not only when you purchase the game, are you going to get the ship that you purchased when you bought the game? You will get a second ship for free if you use my referral code. You will also get 5,000 credits to start so you can get, uh, you know, like... Uh, a weapon or a different spacesuit or cosmetic stuff. You'll get 5,000 free credits. All right. That's what using the referral code is. You don't have to use the referral code. It's mainly to help me and you. Um, but you don't, you'll still get a ship when you purchase the game. It's just when you use that referral code, you'll get a second ship for free. It's a completely free ship and it's on your account for life once you purchase the game. However, if you when you use the referral code and you're just doing the free fly, you have to purchase the game to get the free ship. Does that make sense? So it's like you get it's it's a little it's a little confusing. It's only when you purchase the game will you get the second free ship. Um but if you just purchase the game without my referral code, then you're only going to get the one ship that you purchase the game with. But if you use the referral code, you'll get the second free ship. The referral code is the code that you, every person that plays Star Citizen has. Um, and it's used to track how many people you get to sign up. Now, let me explain it this way. Once you sign up and you've purchased the game, you have your own referral code. Then you can tell others, your friends, family, anyone out there, to use your referral code. It'll add to the amount of people that have used your referral code. You get free ships that way. So I think it is once you have five referrals, you get a free ship. Once you have 10, you get something else, then 15, then there's like 25, then 30, then it keeps going up. You'll get different items for free. That's how you do it. So when I ask people to use my referral code, it helps me because it means I'm able to get other stuff as well. And it helps you because you get, when you first start up the game, because you yourself get a free ship and money. So it's a win-win situation. But here is the cockpit. Got a great cockpit. I love this cockpit. This is your starter ship. This is one of them. There are two basic starter ships. The other is Consolidated Outlands, uh, which is or the Mustang series, which is obviously not today. So therefore, that's why you don't see it.
All right, so, and again, the last ship in the uh, Aurora series is the Ellen. This comes with a shield, a pair of additional... So this is the combat version. Okay. Yep. One, two, three, four weapons as opposed to two on the other ships. And you get more missiles. Other than that, everything else is the same. All right, so we've taken a look at that. Yes, the game... Are, there's already aliens. There's actually alien ships. We'll see those tomorrow. But yes, there's aliens in the game. You don't see them yet because they're not in the game in the game. But the lore has three different alien races as of right now. And you will, you will get to fly their ships and see them. All right, next thing is we're headed downstairs. Our side doesn't have as many ships as Anvil, as you can clearly see. All right, so let's head to their vehicles. The ones you drive as opposed to the ones you fly, which will be down here. Yes, uh, combat versions might have something a little different. Uh, maybe there's no cargo. I'm not sure on the Aurora series, though. All right, so here are your Land Rovers. These are the Ursa Rovers. These are the types of vehicles that you would put in the Constellation in that cargo hold. So let's take a look at it. I mean, I have one of these, but I'll go ahead and rent it. As an inside, as you can see, it has four drop seats for carrying around passengers. And it has two sides to drive. I love the cockpit of the Ursa Rover. It's great. All right. The one next to it is the exact same ship. If you store stuff on your ship and that ship gets blown up, you lose everything on that ship. Unless it's weapons. It, once you go to your vehicle loadout and you put weapons on your ship, those weapons will stay on your ship even when it blows up and you claim it again. As of right now, but that could change, of course. But if you have items stored in your ship, like, you know, weapons and uh, armor and clothes and whatnot, it will disappear if your ship blows up. Everyone has insurance. There's not a single ship that doesn't have insurance. Now, some ships might only have six month insurance. Some ships that you buy today, like the ones, if you get into the game with a starter ship, you have 120 months. That's 12 years. So you're never going to have to really worry about anything. But there are people that originally got the game that might have a ship that only has three months or six months, and they will have to buy insurance after that three month period to be able to continually respawn a ship. Exactly. If a ship is insured, you get the ship back. You can claim the ship again. But if it's not insured, then once that ship is done, it's done. But there are no ships that are like that right now. All right, what's over here? We just have a place to sit, okay? All right, so let's go to the display hall. These are for the ships that are not currently in flyable yet. This is the Scorpius. This is the most, this is the RSI equivalent of the X-Wing. As you can see, the wings fold up and then they'll fold back down as well just like the x-wing this is a ship uh that uh is a two-person ship i believe so you'll have uh two people that can fly this ship 
And here we have, is this the RSI Polaris? Yes, oh no, this is the Perseus. The models don't look big, but this ship is a massive ship. Look at the weapons there. Look at that. That's that's the weapon. So just imagine if you see how big weapons are compared to a person. This is a massive ship. Lots of space inside. A uh, huge capital type of ship. This game will be fully out in 12 years. I think this game will be out in probably two or three years. And then they're going to continue to build. But I think it'll be out. I think these, the, the single player story will be out in probably two years. And this will be out in maybe three. This is the Polaris. Yep. This is another huge, massive, massive ship. Looks small, but this ship is freaking huge. All right. Well, there you go, ladies and gents. We have looked at everything the Aero uh, Space Expo has in store. So now, why don't we just take a ship out and fly? You guys want to see that? Maybe we could do one of those bounty missions. We just got to figure out which ship we want. I mean, we have a bunch of ships that we can take out to fly. So I got to think of what ship do I want to show off? So we're going to head out of the expo hall. Head back to the expo lobby. And then we're going to head to the spaceport. Let's fly. All right. Heading to the Metro Loop, and then we'll get on the train, and then we need to head to the spaceport. So, you've got the Commons there and Aspire Grand. I think going here is going to get us. The oh, it just left. All right, so we got 38 seconds to wait. That's right, I'm Commander Shepard. So we're waiting for the train to arrive, and then it's going to take us to the spaceport. Capsule now approaching station. Stand clear of disembarking passengers. Capsule now approaching station. No, Garrus is not here, but there is a race that almost looks like Garrus in this game. Not quite, but they do. The Vandal, I believe, probably look the closest to Garrus. But they're an evil race. They're very, uh, they're, they're an evil race, just like Garrus. What's the score? Uh, football team, let's see, Ohio State is up. 49 to 7. So I say we're doing pretty good. We're, we're doing pretty well. It's nighttime right now. When we started out, remember, it was daytime. And now look, it's nighttime. You're right. Garrus is the, is the best evil person in the game. I, I agree with you. All right, so now we're heading to uh, Spaceport. Oh, wait, hold on. The nope, we need to stay here. No! Oh, we just made it, thank God. Wow, okay. 
this should now take us to the spaceports. Nighttime. Remember, this is the furthest planet from the sun, so it's the coldest planet. Meaning that if we didn't have good clothing on and we were outside, we could uh, freeze to death. If you go to Hurston, that's the closest planet to the sun, so that planet is hot and its moons are very, very hot because it's very close to the sun. So you have to have the proper attire. All of that matters in this game. Nearing next stop. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. I appreciate it. But it'll really only count if you actually purchase the game. There are two different types of referrals. One is you referred someone to check out the, the game. But once they actually purchase the game, then it recounts, then it, uh, it, it counts as an actual referral. So there's like a, a pending ones and then actual referrals. All right, let's head to the spaceport or the uh, terminal. All right, so we're going into a ship now. We're going to be going into space. We need to change our attire because right now we're in civilian clothes. This is not going to be good for us in space. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do something what's called uh, death uh, if you were to keep it. So let's go ahead and put on... Um, let's do it in ways that all right so let's put it back in take all of our clothes off oh yeah it's getting naughty in here it's freaking naughty all right undersuits so you want to put an undersuit on first you can see this one look at the temperature rating negative 75 to 225 degrees celsius meaning that this is this will be good in cold and it'll be extremely good in hot weather Let's, let's use, let's go this one. Hold on. Oh, okay. I got to take the hat off first. You can't have the hat on. There you go. There you go. Now you can see we've got our suit on. So now let's go armor. What type of armor? No worries, Daniel. You use the code, so as soon as you get it, I'll get credited for it. Why don't we go with this one? This one looks pretty cool. So let's put the pants on. Let's put the arms on. Let's put the chest on. And finally, the helmet. Now that looks like a very cool... I like this armor now we can't leave without you know at least equipping some type of weapon right so this is what we currently have just gonna place a pistol just give ourselves a pistol there you go uh flares weapons uh there's also ammo for the pistol but we don't have any in here uh, i think that should be good enough for now you can also put a combat knife out there we have a few of them so why don't we take this one and now you can see the combat knife on our uniform right there exit there you go now look at us is that not cool or what as we walk slowly we're badass Uh, cybernetic implants has not been in the game yet, as far as I can tell. But it could be in the future, you never know.
Looks like he's got a rip in his ass. Uh, Strain, did you, uh, did you shart yourself? Was that a nasty fart? Or what? Well, here's the problem. If I were to go and have this uniform on outside, I would probably die because there is a leak. There is a leak in my suit right now. So I don't know if that's safe. I don't trust that. I really don't. So let's take this one off. Let's go with a different armor set. Maybe I had explosive diarrhea. Go with something basic. And helmet-wise, what do we want to do? I got a lot of helmets, as you can see. I suppose we can go the one that actually fits it. This is the one that I believe fits this helmet. There you go. Kind of look like a character from Dead Space, right? All right, so we'd have to go back to our weapon because we unequipped it all, remember? And there we go. New web or new look. Look at just how good this looks. The animations for walking. Yeah, let's make sure the... Uh... Alright, looks like we're good. I don't see any... I don't see any holes in our, in our pants, so he hasn't farted yet. Isn't that just so amazing? Alright, let's go. This is the spaceport. So, this is just, like I said, this is Microtech, furthest planet from the star. If you come over here, you can rent ships. And I'll give you a little taste of just how much it costs to rent a ship. So you'd come over here to Luxury Rentals, click the button, and here you go. That's the Titan I told you guys about, which is another starter package. Great ship. But say, for instance, you could rent it for 43000 for one day. Or you could go up to 30 days for uh, 649000 So, you know, if you don't want to buy a ship and you want to try certain ships, you can do that. Here's a, a racing bike that you can test out for 10000 a day. It's up to you. I try to cater to everyone, you know. They got this AI, which is pretty cool. It's all over this uh, uh, planet. Hi there. How can I assist you today? I want her to tell me a joke. Have you heard this one? What do you call a spaceship that's flying without a pilot? Dangerous. That's so funny. Can I help you with anything else? Have you heard this one? What do you call a spaceship that's flying without a pilot? Dangerous. Yeah, it's the same joke. At least, come on, get some new jokes. Can I help you with anything else? All right, you got surface engines. So, you would take this elevator if you wanted a vehicle retrieval. See, these are the vehicles that we have. We have a Grey Cat PTV. Whether it's the latest in cutting edge technology okay. or the beauty of our award. Uh, hold on just a sec, guys.
Jin's in here with me. Everybody say hi. We're creative innovation. So th uh, these are that ballista and uh, the Ursa rover. Oh, I didn't do the Spartan. Not that I really need to, but if we wanted to uh, just go, let's say, for instance, this will be hilarious. Why don't we do Micro this? This will be fun. We're going to take the gray cat out. She's feeling a little bad right now, so that's why she came in here and wanted to spend some time in here. So she's not feeling, she's feeling a little under the weather. Getting some, because I got the fan in here going, so she's getting a little air. Okay, what, what hangar did they say it was at? I forgot. Uh, garage 10. Okay. So we need to go to garage 10. This is a little gray cat vehicle. This is a very tiny ship. Or a little vehicle. Tiny, tiny. Well, let's take it for a little ride. Wanna go for a ride? Turn it on. Alright, so what you're gonna need to do is hit F11. Go to friends. Spaceport and tell them I need to leave the hangar. And then it opens. Now, this is not a very fast vehicle, obviously. It's a little go-kart, kind of. <laughs> the golf cart. You can see this is a snowy place. Now, one thing I want to take a note is let's head outside. Now, look at... Look at this. You see the wind? See our character? Bracing herself because, or himself, because um, the wind is very, very blowy here. But look, right now the outside is negative 80 degrees Celsius. And luckily, we have on an outfit that can survive in 80 degrees Celsius. So we're okay. However, if we were to put on an outfit that is not good for negative 80, then it would be a lot longer. Notice how it says survival estimate. In this outfit we currently have on, we can only live for 24 minutes before the cold would kill us. So if we were to wait until that got down to like a minute, our outfit would be completely covered in ice and we would just freeze to death. So you have 25 minutes to live, pretty much, in this armor. If we chose a different armor, then I would be the case if we had an armor that is better for negative degrees. So you see, you see how that plays into everything. But it's pretty cool. There we go. Now we got our flashlight so we can use it. Remember, that's we came across this entire little system here. Do you see how everything works? It's a beautiful game. All right, let's head back inside and actually take a ship. So we've got our landing bay. Now notice how there is stuff on... Did you see that? 
Notice how there's water droplets on our uh, whatever. Hit F, right click or the um, go to actions and go to player and wipe visor. There you go. Now it's clear again. So when it gets too rainy and too wet on your visor and you can't see ahead of you, you can use that to do it. This ship has been around since the beginning of the game, this gray cat. So the model doesn't look that shit. We just crashed. Jeez. So the model doesn't look that good. Vehicles look way better than this now because this was one of the first vehicles modeled into the game. So they haven't done a buy they haven't done an upgrade on this yet. But they will in the future, obviously. All right, so the docking bay is open for us. This is where we need to go to dock. There we go. And there you have it. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. You have to cycle. And then we can go in. All right, we'll head back up. MBIS terminal. Now we'll take a ship out. Yeah, this the ambition of this game is truly remarkable. Okay, let's take a ship out. Uh, commercial flights. Remember, Here we go. Now, what does this mean, commercial flights? It's coming in the game soon, where the AI will be able to take you to places. So this is where you would go to the commercial flight section to, like, be transported somewhere else. Let's say you don't want to fly your own ship, you want the game to do it for you, then that's what you can use that for. All right, this is our ship retrieval, and now you'll see all the ships. Now, see? Rented, rented, rented. That means that we have rented them, and we still have 45 hours left to try them out. If you don't see a rent, that means I actually have this ship. I have the Sabre. I have the Nomad. Right now, I need to claim because it's unknown. So this is what you do when you need to claim a ship. Empire's It'll take 37 seconds and the ship will be there. Or you could pay a little bit of money and it'll be there now, but there's no reason to pay. We have a Mercury Star Runner, which is an amazing ship. It's one of my favorites. We have a Buccaneer, which is a great combat ship. A Talon, a great combat ship. This is an alien ship, just so you guys know. And we have that Constellation Andromeda that I told you about because we got it with... Um, it's a loner. Same thing for that. Uh, sure to all new right now, as a subscriber to RSI, you get all the Constellation series for free for a month. So that's why we have all these. And the Tauruses. So what are we going to take out to... I said I wanted to do some Super Hornet. So I'm going to take out the ship that I rented called the Super Hornet. Careful watch on all personal items. We're going to do a bounty mission. Oh, it's already got millions of players. Hangar 4 is where we're going. This is a very popular game. There it is. There is the Super Hornet we just rented from the Aerospace Center. You can go ahead and hit F11. Tell that we need to leave the docking area. That'll open it up. And let's take the ship.
If you want to quickly turn everything on, you want to hit R. No, no, no. I mean, it runs runs pretty well. Um, there you go. And this is what it looks like when you have it on. We're going to go into our thing. Remember what I told you guys. We're going to do a bounty hunter mission right here. So we're going to click accept. Also, go back. Mercenary, a call to arms. Always accept it. There you go. Now let's get out of here. And there you have it. All this is in real time. Thank you. And please visit again. Or heading, you know. Going to the restricted areas, so you want to make sure you stay out of the restricted areas as much as possible. Right now, the frames are a little bit low, and that's just because of everyone playing right now. But I'm still getting at least 40 right now. Now, where we started, when we first started this game up, was this building right here. Check this out. This building right here is where we literally started in our bed when you first saw me start the game up. What we're going to do now is you can land on top of that building. Uh-oh. Shit. I did that accidentally. I was going too fast. That was my fault. That was totally my fault. I was going in a little too hot. Now, remember, we set our save point. You guys remember? We set it at the Carrick. Let's see if it if it loads up at the Carrick. And it most certainly did. See? We're at the Carrick. And I'm a naked boy. We just lost everything that we had. And we're back at the Carrick on the Explo floor. And we're a naked boy. Because we're a clone. Might want to put something on strain. You're a little bit naked right now. And as you can see, we lost everything that we had on us because our ship exploded like an idiot. I'm going to put this one on. That's a that's a huge huge undersuit. I look ridiculous. But there you go. All right. Now we still have our mission as you can see, the wave point is still there for the mission. So we just need to uh Need to get back to the spaceport and take out another ship. That's all it is. So we'll go to the sub deck. Crap. There you go. There you go. Yes, yeah, so you can treat them from your body. Mm hmm. There you go. As you can see, we are literally back exactly where we first set the medical in the, the beginning of the game. That was completely my fault. I was going way too fast when I was coming in. 
and we died. I mean, there's there's no one to blame but me right there. Now, notice our our uh, heartbeat is up to 93 because we're running. The faster you run, the more your heartbeat's going to go up. You can see just how extreme this game really is. It's amazing. This is this is going to be once it's finally out. Ah, oh, shit. See, sometimes you can die randomly. <laughs> I just died and now I lost this suit. But. Uh. And we're back. But I'm dead, so there we go. Sheesh. Make sure you turn all the settings down if you're having a hard time running it. And we're naked again, see? You remember, remember last time when I took a lot of damage in that one area? This is kind of similar to that, like, they're just... Oh god, now I'm back in the bed again. I think it's time for this server to be done, to be honest. It seems like this server is on its last leg. But we just lost that suit too, but should be able to pick it up. It should be waiting for us when we come out here, because we died literally in the expo hall, so... Unless someone else has already looted it... We should be able to... Should be right up here. As soon as we get in the elevator and come out... Hopefully no one took are loot. People can do that. Anyone can loot anything. I want to take the stairs. All right. Now, when we get up here, we should see a box of where all of our loot was dropped. All right, where did we die? I thought it was about right in here. Although I don't see I don't see my box. Maybe they don't. Oh, I know why. So when they were testing the servers before this came live, a lot of people would just kill themselves in this area and it would be stacked with bodies. So they probably made this area for your body to disappear immediately. So that way, when you when new people come in and they see all these bodies on the floor, it doesn't look stupid and ridiculous. I think that's what they did. And that's why, unfortunately, you're not going to find your stuff here. But anywhere else you die, you'll find it. See? I mean, that's just, it's how it is. All right, let's go ahead and get something on. This time I'm not going to waste a suit. I'm just going to put on an undersuit. Careful. Doors are now That's all I need to do. We only got three left. Just do venture. And of course we got to put on a helmet. Let's put on the ridiculous helmet, the parasite helmet. There we go. Good enough for government work. As you can see, my eyes have seen better days.
All right, so right now we're just waiting again until we uh, we're in the Aspire Grand. Stay here, and we'll go back to the spaceport. This time, I'm just gonna go straight up. I'm not gonna uh, accidentally crash into anywhere. As far as you not being able to run the game, um, you know, it does take a lot of, it does take a, a decent PC to run this, but just make sure you turn all the settings down. If you have to go down to 720, go down to 720, and uh, you need to have memory. You gotta have, at least I would recommend, 16 gigabytes of memory and running this game on a solid state hard drive. Well, there's no Salvatore, there's no cybernetics in the game, so of course you're not going to lose any cybernetics if you don't have any. I don't know if they're ever going to put that in. I mean, nothing has ever been said about how allowing people to have cybernetics in the game. All right, here we go. No death of a spaceman this time. We're going to get out. We're going to do that job. All right. Tide is travel. Why not rest? So we now lost that ship because it blew up. So you gotta go to where the Super Hornet is, says destroyed, and you can claim. This is what that insurance does. It'll take seven minutes before it gets here, but file the claim. If you want to expedite it, it'll cost 3,700 something to get it to two minutes. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna take that. Why don't we instead... This is the ship you're going to get for free by using my referral code. This ship right here. Just so you know. You see how it's in there? Because someone actually purchased the game over the past two days using my referral code. And now I have that ship. What ship am I going to use, though? Uh... Looking for a good time? Be sure to visit Wally's Bar at the Promenade. Only a quick ride on the Metro loop. Yeah, I'm going to use the Arrow. Why not? This was the first ship we saw. It was the smallest ship that I told you that was the like the fastest the ship in the game. The is this is the most maneuverable ship in the game. Also has one of the greatest cockpit cockpits I love in the game too. See how it's very the small, like one of the smallest, but it's got great firepower. One, two, three, four, four weapons on a small ship like this is pretty, pretty decent. F11, friends, spaceports. You are clear to launch. Landing gear raised. Gonna go to weapons and see what my fire groups are. 
I'm gonna put them both on zero. And I'm gonna hit G. There we go. Perfect. Just like just like that. So what I did what I did was I set to lock mode. And I'll explain. Let's get up out of the atmosphere. Thank you. And please visit again. There you go. As you can see, we're leaving the atmosphere. See the cities down there? They look beautiful at night. hit F2 to bring up the star map. We're all the way up here, see? Planet that's farthest away from the sun. These are the planets. Crusader. Uh, that's uh, Hurston. Arpcore. And Microtech. So we're going to click here. We need to go to where it says target's location. Which is going to be here. And I don't see it because it's glitched right now unfortunately uh see the target location there unfortunately it's glitched but this is where we need to go which is catalope which we should be able to get there anyways we're gonna hit b to bring up our quantum here we go all right target's location we're high enough to where we can quantum now i'm going to show you one of the coolest things in the game we go we're just uh, going away from the planet and we're coming up on the moon that's no moon oh this is not a space combat this is a shit I didn't put a weapon I don't even have a weapon well, I can't even do this. That's my bad. All right, let me explain. So, this mission is not, this mission is a mission, first person mission, meaning you need to have a weapon. And I unfortunately did not put a weapon on this outfit before I left. So I can't really even do it. Let me try this and hopefully it's in this area. I don't know where it's actually located. Let me see. Okay, hold on. What I need to do is go to Contract Manager, go to Accepted, take the... There we go, and see where this is. All right. Oh, good, it's here. No, it's not. It's 57 miles away. 57 million miles away. So what that means is this ship cannot get there. It's not fast enough to get there. So... I don't know what I'm going to do, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah, like I said, it's not optimized, so the frame rate when you're looking out and you're crossing planets, it can get a little low, but it doesn't happen often, and it usually only happens when they're doing these big events, for me at least, with a 3090, so... Um, I get like 90 frames right now, so... <laughs> it's just, for whatever reason, that just, it, it always does that. Uh, as I said, there is a mission here. Uh, but I don't have a weapon on me. See? I don't have enough fuel to get there. Because it's over at Crusader. Which is really, really far away.
Okay. Well, let's see if we can loot and find a weapon. What do you say? All right, so we're going to travel here anyways. Although the calibration is not working, probably because I got to turn this. There you go. Okay, right now the spooling is not working. So let me power off my ship and then I'll power back on. All systems offline. Yeah, you have to physically put the weapons on yourself. Yeah, calibration isn't working. They, I'm sure someone's probably put in that uh, you can't calibrate. Although we got to here, so I don't know why that's... You see what I mean? You see the calibration isn't... Uh, let me... Clear route and see if that does it. There we go, now it's working. I just needed to clear the route. So all my ships, all my weapons, all my gear is stored on the planet. So I have access to none of it. If yes, you could set a beacon to have someone come and rescue you. But yes, you can get stranded. You see how you've got Hydra and, and Qual? You see that in the right side, right here? This is your fuel. And this is your quantum fuel. So this fuel, if this goes down, we can't go anywhere or do anything. We'll have to use a beacon. You just look how quick this ship is. I mean, this is... This is a super fast ship. All right, so what we're doing is we're heading down here. Let's set it to go fast enough. So uh, the target we need to take out is a person. He is underneath the planet. He is like in a bunker, uh, but we have no weapon to do it. We still have our fists, though. So if we can sneak behind someone, we can use our fists and then take their weapon. Essentially, that's what we're going to try to do. Awesome, Zach. Glad to hear. There's mining in the game. You can see those rocks. That means they're mine. They're mineable. Only certain ships can mine, though. All right. So as soon as I get close enough, these turrets are going to start aiming at me. Landing gear deployed. See radar lock. Shields. That's still pretty far away. I don't know. There's got to be a better location. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're destroying me. Okay, I'm just going to land here. It's going to be a quite a long way to trek, but it's fine. There we go. We just landed. Now we are on a moon. This is not a planet. This is a moon. There is no atmosphere here. Well, there's atmosphere, but it's not breathable. You would just immediately die. And our ship, look, it's 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 been toasted. The, those turrets were firing and aiming at me. And our ship has been hurt. But as you can see, if I go into my inventory, I don't have anything. Because we didn't bring anything with us. Because I didn't think I was going to do this specific mission. So now what we have to do is travel 800 and some meters. It's going to take a little time. I couldn't land close enough because there was no place to land close enough. I guess I could have landed a little closer. I could have gotten behind this big rock over here. Right now it seems the textures aren't loading in as good as they should. Because you see how blurry those... Uh, 
those mountains look they don't normally look like that so this has got to be something to do with this patch probably they'll need to update it oh god don't die i only got 16 minutes in this outfit i currently have on right now to live so this is not good i'm probably going to die God, it's going to take like 16 minutes just to get freaking. Now it's down to 15 minutes already. That's because the more energy I waste, the faster it goes down. All I need to do is get to a place with air, which luckily inside this building is going to have air. So as long as I get there before the 15 minute thing timer counts down, I'm OK. But it's already down to 15 minutes now. You'll notice that if I just run regularly, it'll be slower. See how it's, it's it's doing by 15 and it's a little slower. It's actually more lifelike. But if I start running, I exert energy, which means my survival time goes down. Okay, we're getting closer. See, I could have got behind this rock right here, but I, I didn't have enough time to think to get behind it. You can also take out the turrets, too. Look at my suit. How it's cold. Because I'm freezing. And I only got six, 15 minutes to live. All right, so... Okay, we made it here. All right. Now, once I get in here, you'll see the survival estimate will go down. There you go. See, it's gone. It's because there's oxygen here now, and I can breathe. But there's something I need to figure out first. What is the... Okay, nothing in my personal inventory. All right, there we go. Unarmed combat. This is what I got to do. So to throw a quick jab. That's your block. OK, here we go. Go down to the sub level and go into stealth mode. All right, there's one guy we're taking out. He's right there, but there's a lot of people down here that can kill us. So this might this might end very badly because I don't have a weapon. They don't see me yet. Ah, oh, I thought that was a box to loot, but nope. Oh, shit. This is not good. They already know I'm here. He's, he's like, got him. Take your shotgun.
Woohoo! Got him just in time. There you go. All right, uh, let's take his, equip his arms. Equip his legs. And, all right, uh, there's oxygen here, so I can go ahead and chip. All right. We'll wait for now. Let's go ahead and finish this off. Where's our guy? Let them come to us. That's going to be the key, because we have a shotgun. Shotgun's not going to be good for long distance, so let them come to us if we can. There's our target. He still hasn't come all the way down. I'm kind of waiting for him to come. The thing is, the current weapon we have is not good for long distance. I don't want to die super quickly. And that's what's going to happen if I get out there. They're, like, focused on me right now, so... I could somehow smoke them out. I'm just going to have to go up. There he is. There's our target. We take him out, we immediately get paid. Yeah. Got him. Okay, we got oh, we got our money. Object objective complete. We can literally leave now. We don't have to stay here. I don't see where these other guys are. Alright, me from top. See him. Shotgun ain't gonna do much good here. Cover. Can't shoot him. Now I'm gonna get paid for every single person I take out. Got him. See? 700 credits. Got him dead. I didn't see where he was. Now, this is where you can do this. Hold backspace to die, and we'll go back exactly where we were in the Carrick. Or we can hold M to activate a rescue beacon. So let's hold M. Rescue beacon activated. Searching for available assistance. So, time until death, one hour, 24 minutes. We get to keep the money. So the money we made, we get a 100% complete. But every item that I just looted off that guy, this shotgun, everything like that, if we end up dying, that's it. I mean, we're going to lose it all. You can get out of that mode there, except we got a little bit of a glitchy error here. There we go. See, I'm on the ground. I don't know where that guy came from. I mean, I see him right there. I couldn't find him earlier, though. 
So far, nobody has accepted the beacon. We took out... I mean, if we would have just take, taken our guy out and then left, we only had 60% health left, so just one shot's all it took to take us down. But you see how awesome it is. It's so much fun, and I can't recommend this enough. So... We're just going to go ahead and just kill ourselves. Nobody's coming to get us. We got the money, so we got paid. And uh, we do lose uh, another suit. But we didn't lose any weapons because we didn't bring any weapons. And it should put us right back to where the Carrick is. Sometimes the loadings can take long when you're doing when you're doing something, you know, the army you have has to be taken off. You have to be spawned in. You have to make sure that there could be other people that use that same spawn in the Carrick. So I mean, that is the case. You do get bonus points for specific armor and stuff that you have. Some armor is stronger and you get more health than others. So, yes, it is very true. But as you can see, we're back on the Carrick. And as you can see, we're naked again, which shows that we don't have... Um, we don't have, you know, anything. But that's going to be all that I'm showing for the game today, ladies and gents. Tomorrow we'll be back. Um... At some point, because there's a new day uh, at the uh, Aerospace Center. But I want to show it off. So if you do want to check out the game, again, make sure you use that referral code uh, when you're checking out the game. And then if you do purchase it, you're going to help us both out by uh, allowing yourselves to get another free ship added on to whatever you already got. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Love you all. Please take care of yourselves. And I will see you on the next stream. Peace out. Bye.